In the trail towns, they say the only thing wilder than Texas steers are the cowhands who drive them. So if a big herd is gonna reach the market, there has to be someone tough enough to handle the crew and the cattle and anything else that might get in the way during a thousand slow grinding miles. And it's a job and it's mine. Gil Favors, my name, trail boss. How's it look up ahead, Pete? Not bad. About six miles to the Brazos River. Plenty of grass for a couple of days. Good. Good. The herd's gone. It needs a few days rest and graze. I picked a place to camp about a mile up the valley. We'll have to hold to the right, though, because there's some farms over on the left side. How close? Plenty of room for the herd without crossing their land. Good. Welcome to Paradise Valley. Welcome? I apologize for bringing them, but I thought it better by showing force now. It might save us from using it later. Oh, this is Court Wesley. My name is Eli Becker. Sure. Gil Favor, Roddy Yates, Pete Nolan. I'll try to explain, Mr. Favor. We just got through fighting a war with you cattlemen. We're farmers. We didn't want to fight, but the ranchers threatened to drive us off our lands make us leave Paradise Valley, so we fought. And won, apparently. Nobody wins a range war, Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor, we work like slaves to clear our lands here, get our first crop planted. For two years, we chopped down trees, tore out root clumps, lug boulders away. This year will prove the fruit of our labor. We're nursing our first harvest. Well, I hear there's plenty of room in the valley. We'll pass through without getting near any of the planted land. You'd better. If one of your men or one of your beeves trespass on our farms or tramples one shoot... I told you, we'll watch out. These men here are well armed. I can raise five times as many in two hours. That adds up to a lot of odds. It's enough. Keep your stock off our lands. No alibis, no excuses. Or we'll wipe you out. Welcome to Paradise Valley. We still gonna stay and graze the herd for a while? I haven't noticed the beeves gained any weight in the past few minutes. We'll stay. Think this fella Becker is bluffing, boss? Doesn't figure. Roddy, you better stay with the herd. Pete, let's take a look at that campsite you found. <laughs> Boss, those cattle must have ten ears. That caterwauling to Quinces calms them down. I'm about ready to stampede myself. You'd best plug your ears, then. That's one thing we can't afford in this valley, a stampede. Boy, that's sure right. Keep the ring hurting tight. Keep those stairs moving. Looks like we're due for a lightning storm. That blue fire starts crackling off their horns. I want them too tired to move. What do you think those farmers would do if some of our cattle stampeded their land? Hope we never find out. Oh, oh! Caballos, caballos, cálmese, 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 cálmese. Oh, oh, take it easy. Oh! This really handles those hammerheads, doesn't he? Good wrangler. we will need some help later on, though. Tell Quince and Scarlet to give them a hand.
is it? He must have been one of the farmers. What can we do? Nothing that's going to help him. Oh, boy, that, that poor devil didn't stand a chance. No. It doesn't seem real, boss. One minute there's a man standing there, and then that. Our horses trample a man, and we don't even know who it is. Does anything like this have to happen? Better see who he is. Ken! 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 We can't let her come down here. Stay here. Hey! I brought you some hot coffee and sandwiches. Wait. Don't go down there, miss. Who are you? I'm your favorite trail boss of a herd back there. Where's my husband? There's, there's been an accident. Accident? Wait. It's Ken! Don't go down there, miss. Wait! Wait! Tried to catch them. Your horses. It was your fault. You, you murdered him. No. You killed my husband. No, listen to me. It was an accident. It just happened. It wasn't anybody's fault. I better get someone to look after. Is there someone I can get? A friend, relative? Where's the nearest farm then? Eli's place. That way, it's about a mile. Stay with her. Eli Becker, he's the one who warned us about keeping our stock off his land. I'm not going to start a range war over, over an accident. The woman needs help. Get someone else, boss. It doesn't matter. It's better that he hears it from me than someone else. Who's cheating who here? You take it easy on him, Ann Minnie. He's a tenderfoot, you know. Oh, tenderfoot, my left eyebrow. <laughs> Pretty face card shark. I swear he's got 19 fingers and every one of them's crooked. <laughs> She's right, Eli. I'm not fit company for a decent lady. You should have left me in that saloon. <laughs> well, I couldn't do that. You were spilling blood all over Jake's floor, and he didn't have any sawdust left. Well, you still didn't have to bring him here. I don't know why you can't bring home stray dogs and cats like other men do, Eli Becker. Or else learn to shoot straight. You must have missed my pump by two inches, you big farmer. <laughs> the trail boss we met this morning. What do you want here? Mr. Becker, there's... It's been an accident. I had my whole crew out ringing her, ring her and the cattle. But a bolt of lightning hit near the Remuda. A bunch of horses broke loose and stampeded. Out of Nesterland? And next farm up. Wade's place? What happened? We tried to catch them. And they headed down a ravine. A man was working there. They went over him. Oh, no. You mean Ken Wade? Killed? We'll need a wagon. And his wife, she's taking it real hard. Nellie. Poor girl. I'll get my things. Nellie.
Shoot, Court. Not to save the life of this bloody handed cattleman. Not for him, I won't. But to save you from hanging for murder, I'll bust your kneecaps if I have to. Drop it. Now. All right, Court. Go on and hitch up the wagon. Take Minnie Lou over to Millie's place. I'll ride on ahead of here with Mr. Faber. A little more dangerous than I thought. Why? Because I can control my temper? A grown man ought to be able to exercise a little self-control. You'll be needing this, Mr. Faber. It does seem likely. Mrs. Wade. I wasn't expecting anything. The way she was carrying on is sort of out of her mind. She got behind me and hit me with a rock. I said, where is Mrs. Wade? I don't know. She went home, I guess. She can't stay up there alone. Tell Court I got up to get her. Ooh. Tell him I'm going to bring her back to our place. And Mr. Faber. Your stock killed one of our farmers on his own place, in spite of my warning to you. You'll hear from me tomorrow just what we're going to do about it. Well, the river's not too high yet. Not yet. It looks like it may rain tonight. There's been a storm brewing in those mountains upriver for the past two days. If that's rain, it'll all drain down into the Brazos. We'll have a flood crest hitting here in a couple of days. Yeah, it'll be so high and fast, we won't be able to get the herd across. That's right. Well, don't you think we ought to get them across right away? But this rainy season, there's no telling when the river will go down again. We can't just ride off. Forget we were responsible for a man being trampled to death. We'll have to do everything we can. Yeah, but we've only got two days of grazing. If the herd gets trapped on this side of the river, they'll starve to death. Becker said he'd let us know in the morning what he decides. We'll wait till morning. Throw you around <laughs> Boy, you need some doctoring, boy. I'm all right, Rich. Your face don't look like it did when you left, Mr. Faber. Coffee hot? Must you get a couple of cups? Jesus. Senor Faber, you do not find the horses? Uh, they must have kept running until they hit the river. You gather them up, take as many men as you need. I will go and ask the horses to come back. I can do that easier alone. The horses will listen to me when they are not excited. Jesus. 
you run into anybody, you keep your mouth shut. Senor... Just don't let them know you're our wrangler. Senor Favor, Jesus right now is not very proud to be your wrangler. When you gather him up, you stay clear of the planted land and try not to talk to anybody. I will not talk, Senor Favor, only to my horses. Here's your coffee, boss. Well, now, the gloom around you two is so thick you could cut it with a piece of string. What happened? Did the horses run over some of the farmland? They trampled one of the farmers to death. Well, that's as bad a way to die as there is. This fellow Becker, the one who kept spouting off about winning the war, did he have anything to do with the way your face looks? Forget it, Pete. Well, Becker tried to kill the boss when he found out what happened. Well, now, anybody starts manhandling the boss. I ain't doing anything for a moment, Mr. Favor. I'd like to meet this fellow Becker. He couldn't help what he did. The man who was trampled to death was his best friend. Well, if you ask me, Mr. Becker was more concerned about the man's wife. All he said was her name. Let it go, it. Roddy. He'll be coming at us. Are we going to make a stand? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, camp right on the road and leading from the farms. You want us to move the herd away from here? Seeing her face, the way she looked at what was left of her husband. Just kept screaming. Couldn't believe he was gone. She was bringing him coffee. You want me to start passing out the rifles and shells? He said he'd let us know what he wanted to do about the accident in the morning. The way it sounds, he's got his mind made up already. Got those farmers as well armed as a brigade. He's showing them they can fight a war and win it. He might find us a little tougher to chew. We're outnumbered four to one. I can't ask any man to fight against odds like that. Any man wants out, let him speak up now. No blame to him. What are you going to do, Mr. Favor? It was horses from my drive that caused a man's death. I can't walk away from that. But the more men stay, the more lives I might have to answer for. One's enough. We didn't exactly expect a Sunday school outing when we signed up. We're part of this drive. The horses are ours, too. There you are. You want any more answers? No. We'll keep the camp here. Take the herd off about a mile. You come get your head doctored. Millie? Shouldn't you ought to be in bed? You're so thoughtful of me, Eli. So kind and considerate. Well, I... I guess you know why I am. I understand. Millie, you he, mean that? Eli, you're not going to let Ken's murderers go unpunished, are you? It's like my own, a debt to Ken. A debt I got to pay. You know what I'm saying. Yes, Millie. I was taking food to him in the field. He was so proud of that field, he could hardly wait for it to come alive. He worked so hard for it. Eli, the men who did that, they can't go unpunished. They mustn't. They won't, Millie. I promise you that.
Why don't you leave him alone? Well, Minnie Lou, I was only thanking him for being so kind. I know exactly what you were doing, Millie, and I don't like it. Here. Oh, no, I hate onion syrup. Well, it's only onions and sugar. It won't hurt you. Mm. Open, or I'll hold your nose and pour it down. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Minnie Lou, I hoped you'd understand. That's the trouble. I do. I only want to see justice done. You mean revenge. They murdered my husband, and I want to see them pay for it. Is that so terrible? It is when you use Eli to be your execution. All right, we'll meet the men at the meadow. Your rifle loaded? Don't, Eli. Don't so what? There's no reason to start a war over a tragic accident. I'm not going to do anything without good reason. All I want to do is investigate and find out if Ken's death was an accident. If it was, I'll forget the whole thing completely. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right. This greener's a weapon. A man wants to do some real damage, this is the same to do it. Eighteen hard shot in each barrel. Boy, it's hard to miss when you're throwing out 36 chunks of lead. Well, I'd back a baby against John Wesley Harden with a gun like this. Why don't you just marry that old gun and be done with it, Wishbone? Well, I'll tell you now. You treat a gun like this right, she'll be a wife to you. And a mother and a lady friend, too. You can depend on that. What do you think's gonna happen, Pete? Wish I knew. I guess we all do. Senor boss, I find the horses. They are tired and very sorry they caused so much trouble. Good work, Jesus. Now you get some grub before it's all gone. As soon as you finish your coffee, start breaking camp, packing your gear. Be ready to move out when I give the word. Are we waiting for Becker to make up his mind? I told him we'd wait till morning. Morning's almost gone. The weather won't wait any longer. We've lost a whole day already. Oh, Jesus? Yes, in your favor. As soon as you finish, settle me a horse. I'll do it pronto. Where are we going, boss? Becker Farm and find out. Settle this thing once and for all. No need to go, boss. Mushy? Yes, sir. Rifles ready? I'll load it and stack inside the wagon, Mr. Favor. Pass them out. Get near some cover. We're not starting the war, Mushy, just getting ready for it. That's uh, quite a little army you've got there, Mr. Becker. Just farmers, Mr. Faber. You must do all your plowing with Winchesters. Mr. Favor, how did Ken Wade really die? Like I told you. It's kind of funny, isn't it, that uh, just a few of the horses break away like that and the rest stay behind? Who is your wrangler? A good man who worked as hard as he knew how to keep those horses in. Who is to blame, then? The storm, the lightning. Suit yourself. Mr. Favor, who made the mistake? What are you looking for, Mr. Becker? Someone to hang? I'm only looking to find out the truth. You've heard the truth. We're sorry for what happened. We want to make it up to Mrs. Wade. We'll do anything we can. But it has to be soon. There's high water coming down the Brazos. It's due any time. Our herd has to be across the river before tomorrow. Mr. Favor, there's over 100 farmers around here who look to me for leadership. And what does that mean? Just this. You're a cattleman. I've told my people what you cattlemen are like. How you kill and you walk away. Now, if one cow or one man goes toward that river there before I find out how Ken Wade died and who is to blame, there'll be over a hundred men down here to see that you never get there alive. Pick 
up your gear. Let's wind it up in a hurry. How are we for shells? Well, we got plenty of rifle shells, enough 45s to fight a, an army. How about gauze, laudanum, carbolic? Plenty. Senor Favor, I want to thank you for what you say about me to that man. Only said what was true, Jesus. No, senor boss, I don't think so. The horses were in my care and they broke loose. The fault is mine and only mine. I will go tell this to senor Becker and his people. You what? Don't you like living, boy? Very much, senor Wishbone. I am not a very brave man. But I am the one senor Becker wants. When he knows this, he will let the rest of you go. Mount up. We're moving out. All right, senor boss. You may only be a wrangler, Jesus, but you got all the makings of a trail rover. Thank you, senor Wishbone. You know, Pete? What are you thinking? Yeah? Well, let's talk about fighting. We've been forgetting about Mrs. Wade. The woman that busted your head. Yeah, well, she was hurt real bad. She, she couldn't help that. Who's gonna take care of her now that her husband's gone? She'll get along. She's got Becker on her side. Minnie? Where's Millie? In the kitchen. What was that for? A tribute, my lovely lady. Oh, sit down. Show me how you did that trick with the red tin. Well, that's cheating, Minnie Lou. Oh, never mind the morality, you pious fake. <laughs> Just show me how. I'm keeping my promise, Millie. The men are gathering in the meadows by tomorrow. There won't be a single cattleman alive in Paradise Valley. Oh, that's good, Eli. Farce. All he did was taunt the trail boss, take a glance around the ravine, and that was a whole investigation. Then it means a war. It can't be helped, Aunt Minnie. You can stop it if you want to. These people out here made me their leader, and I'm only doing what they want me to. After they're all dead, who'll be left for you to lead? He's doing what's right. He's not giving them a chance. They didn't give my Ken a chance. You're doing what's right. The Bible says it. An eye for an eye. And I'm grateful to Eli. Hello. Come in. We came to see Mrs. Wade. There's nothing you have to say that Mrs. Wade wants to hear. You don't look like Mrs. Wade. We only came to tell her how sorry we were about what happened to her husband to give her this money. Money? Yeah, uh, we took up a collection. The whole crew chipped in. It's not very much, but it might help a little. Well, that's very kind of you. And very clever. You can't pay money for killing Ken Wade. You can't buy your way out of causing a man's death. Now get out of here! And don't forget to take your blood money with you. You're not going to save your skins with that. They were telling the truth, Eli. A trick. Court, let's get down to the meadow. Deal me out. Deal me out, Eli. Stop her, Mrs. Wade. Stop him. Stop, Eli. You're the only one who can. What kind of people are they? They run their horses on our field, crush, crush the life right out of a man, and then try to pay for it with money. What kind of men, Aunt Minnie? Hard work and God fearing men, I suppose, who tried to ease your pain the only way they knew how. Blood money, what good is it? What can I buy with it? After our first harvest, we. We were hoping for a family. 
And Minnie, can I buy Ken's children with their money? You can still stop Eli, Mrs. Wade. He hasn't finished settling the horse. You're standing up for those murderers. Those men didn't kill your husband. One of their horses did. Why don't you have Eli go find the horse and shoot it? It's not for you to point the avenging finger. Lest you find your finger pointing toward the heavens, that's where the lightning came from that caused the horses to bolt. Oh, what are you saying? What are you trying to do? Turn me against God. Drovers are sneak back. They're after Eli now, and you're letting them. The drovers didn't sneak back. Well, that's just Eli testing his rifle on his aim. Nancy. Nancy. Mr. Favor. Cattle's fine, Mr. Favor. Hmm? Grazing steady. Hmm? Putting on a house the minute, one could say. One could say. I was just sitting here thinking. Scarlett, you know, you sure are a deep thinker. Mr. Favor, why is our camp so far away? Better than a mile from the herd. We never did that. Well, it has to be a shooting war. I don't want to jitter the herd. Well, they could drive off all of our cattle before we could holler for you. Well, I don't think the nesters are thieves. They're going to make war on us for nothing. Still doesn't make them cattle thieves. I was just asking. Well, oh, say, Joe, who's Nancy? Mr. Favor. I'll pitch ready. Roll or fight, just say the word. I wish it was up to me. Miss a favor. I wish you'd speak to Mr. Wishbone. About what? Well, for one thing, he's got every pocket stuffed with shells for the greener, and he wants to drive with that shotgun loaded and resting between his legs under the seat. Well, Mr. Favor, if we ever hit a bump, he'll blow our hip pockets clear over in the state of Kansas. All right, I'll talk to him about it. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Favor, if those nesters are all set to wipe us out, well, every trigger finger counts. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wishbone won't issue me a rifle. Well, I'll talk to him about that, too. Boss, I've been watching that meadow. Those nesters are gathering, and there's lots of them in their arm. I talked to some men on the riverbank. They expect the crest in about 10 hours. All right. You two get the men in the saddle and start that herd across the river. No? No. And push him across fast. I'll, um, I'll stall Becker. How are you going to get him to listen? He'll listen. I'll catch up with you as soon as I can. Wait a second. If you think I'm going to let you ride the in there... The order alone, was that you and Pete get that herd across the river. That order stands. <laughs> Court, you can't stop him. I have to, Minnie Lou. Or well, the blood of every man who dies on this wall be on Eli's hands, and nobody can live with that many ghosts. Now be careful. You heard it. Yes? You know he won't be able to stop Eli, not with words. One of them will be hurt, maybe killed. Maybe both of them, thanks to you. No, I didn't do anything. Well, you did all that was necessary. I've tried to feel sorry for you. I know how it hurts. How? You've never even had a husband to lose. No. I never have, that's right. thought there was gonna be. We'd made plans for five years. Only the Comanches took a hand. When it was over, I buried what was left. 
my sister, Eli's ma. And I buried his father and his two older brothers. Buried all the hopes and dreams me and Frank had. And I took Eli to raise. You're quite right, Millie. I never have had a husband to lose. Aunt Minnie, I'm sorry. Are you? Let's see. Let's talk about Millie Wade, who had two fine and decent men fall in love with her. The first one died in an accident. And then she dirties up his memory with hate and lust for more blood to be spilled. No, Aunt Minnie, I didn't really. And the honest. other one. She uses his love to twist him into something evil and rotten and drives him to kill for her. You're the only one who could stop Eli. Now, just how sorry are you? All right. Split up into two sections. The first section will come up from the river there. And the other one will. Disarm him. I'm the man responsible for Wade's death. You? As trail boss, I'm responsible for everything that happens on a drive. Even accidents. You know what you're saying? You've got to have blood. One man's better than 40. All I ask is a fair trial. You were already tried in a Bible favor, an eye for an eye. Get that rope, Hornbeck. The Bible also says thou shalt not kill. Listen, court. You want it out of this, now stay out. I'm gonna make these men see the truth. They have too much blind faith in you, Eli. <laughs> you men are entitled to know what your leader's leading you into and why. Let him have his say, Eli. He ain't a trail drover. Eli's being used, and he's using you. In his heart, Eli knows it was an accident. But Millie Wade thinks she wants some blood spilled as revenge for her husband. Do you want to fight a war for a man who isn't man enough to, to get a woman any other way? <laughs> stare at me like I look strange. This is how I dress for church. This is how I think fitting to go to my maker. I'm Senor Favors Remodero, the man you want. He has the man he wants. Get back to the herd. You were in charge of the remuda when the horses broke away? Jesus, get back to the herd. I was the man. The lightning hit the tree, horses scared, and I'm not enough man to hold them. I don't know what Senor Favor tell you, but this is the truth. I want you to turn the herd south. South? Well, the prize was straight ahead. Northeast. I know which way the river is. Turn them south. What do you think you're doing? We're heading for the meadow, Pete. It's going to be the devil to pay when Mr. Favor finds out about it. You won't be in any position to object, unless we're somewhere near to help. Do you know which way we're heading? The river's that way! Roddy knows that. He's deliberately going against orders to see if Mr. Faber needs any help. Well, he ain't as green behind the ears as I thought. What's holding us up? 
I get privilege of the last words. All right, say them, but be quick. To a man, we long the right to know that he dies for something. You make promise to let Senor Faber, his men and his herd go through. I'm making no promises. But Eli... We gotta set an example that drovers will hear about up and down the Sedalia Trail. Eli, you were in the army, weren't you? Lieutenant Colonel, you have your volunteers. I want to check a military point with you. Well, do you think this is the time? This is exactly the time. If you gave an order in the army and that order turned out to be wrong, who was to blame? Officer in charge, me. Would you accept full responsibility for giving the wrong order and expect to take full punishment for making the mistake? I would. Well, a trail drive is run just like an army. Strong discipline, one man in charge. I was in charge when Ken Wade was killed. I gave the order to hold the herd, make the camp. If that order was wrong, I gave it. I was responsible. You're right. Take that off him. Get his horse out. Get back to the camp. Ah! Ah! Bring in that horse. You want to mount up? All right, come on now. We got a job to do. Get that on. Now listen, this is no time to forget Ken Wade. Remember how the life was crushed out of him. Remember, it could happen to any of us, our wives, our children. Get that on there. Looks like they're heading right for us. We got a word for Mr. Favor. It concerns all of you. Your gun. All right, speak up. The herd's headed in the right direction, boss, and they're ready. Look, I don't know what you're figuring, but don't try it. If one cow comes down that hill toward us, your trail boss is gone. That should be clear enough, isn't it, even to you? Is everyone around here out of his mind? Look, I wave my hat and those beeves come running. Mr. Favor may be killed, but I can't just wave my hat and stop these cattle. He may be dead, but the cows don't know it. They just keep coming, and you're breaking your neck to get out of their way. This herd's gonna run over everything for 10 miles. There won't be a green spot left in this valley. Is that what you want? Well, go ahead, let me know about it. Is that what you want? Slap that horse out from under him now. You hear what I said now? You just touch that horse, mister. You just try and touch it. Eli! Eli! I didn't know what I was saying, what I was doing. When Ken died, all I could think of was to hurt back. You mean you want me to let Ken's murderers go unpunished? It was an accident. I know that now. If we let them get away with this this time, next year other cattle drives will feel free to trample on our lands and our people. I ask you to take revenge for me, Eli. Well, now I'm begging you to stop. For me. We just finished fighting a war with the cattlemen, and we won it. Because we were ready, right? We did keep on fighting, even though we did win. We've got to set an example. We haven't been bothered since, have we? Well, have we? I owe my life to you, Eli. 
There's a limit how much a man can stand. Roddy? It's over, Eli. It's all over. You want to come home? Aunt Minnie will be there, and so will Millie, and of course, for what it's worth, I'll be around. We get together here to join up these two innocents in the traces of wedded bliss. <clears throat> now, uh, who gives this here child to be married to this man? Me, naturally. You got the ring. Oh, right here. Now, uh, do you... Uh... A bird. Take this here child, um, Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine, to be your lawful wedded. Amen. I mean, I do. And uh, do you, Lorraine, take Bert here likewise? I do. Uh, the ring. We're stuck. Excuse me a minute. You idiot. Get me stuck, Mr. Wishbone. Oh! Mm. Mushy, you're the best man. Go ahead, boy. Set her in place. I hear now pronounce you hitched. All right, Bert. Yeah. I'll give her away. That means I'm the first. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. And we certainly can't forget our best man. Thank you, Mushy. Well, go get it. <laughs> you want the cake. Thank you. Same thing, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, here now. You're staying to eat, and I won't take anything but yes for an answer. Well, thank you, friend, but I gotta get going. Though on second thought, I think I can spare the time for a bite or two. You know, riding circuit don't exactly fill a body out. No. Here now. No, you don't. Now, you may be married, but you're not leaving here until you've been sent off proper. Mushy! Oh, boy. How come you never bake anything like that for us, Wishbone? Toothless, if you can find a woman that's fool enough to say I do, I'll bake you a cake so big that you'll have to climb it to cut it. <laughs> Get off the Now, honey, a ship isn't launched without a christening, and a marriage isn't aimed right without a cake cutting, so let's get to cutting. Come on, Bert. Your bride's gonna need some help here. Señor. 
You mind telling me just what's going on here? Uh, well, you see, Senor Wishbone, he... Uh, uh, what I mean is... Uh, we just thought we'd have a little party. A party? What for? Uh, you better ask Senor Wishbone. I'll take you your horse. Nice to have you back. We was getting kind of worried about you. Wishbone. Well, now, we wanted to wait for you, but the preacher was in a hurry, and well, we didn't know when you'd get back. Wishbone, there's dry country ahead. This herd is trail-weary, about ready to break any time. Mr. Favor's up in Denver, and... Preacher? Uh, yeah, this is a wedding celebration, complete with a brand-new bridegroom. Look here. Look who's the bridegroom. Come on, honey, come on. I'm afraid this is all my fault, Rowdy. We was going to wait no, until... No, if it's anybody's fault, it's mine. I'm Lorraine Harvey, Mr. Um... Now, Lorraine, this is Rowdy Yates. He's the man who agreed to take me and my 40 head up to Bighorn Basin. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful we are, Mr. Yates. Oh, well, uh, 40 head uh, don't complicate things too much in a herd this size. But, uh... But, um, a honeymoon might, huh? Yeah, you see, uh, uh we're going to pull out of here as soon as Quince gets back and... Uh, Women don't go with trail drives, honeymoon or no. We know that, Rowdy. There's a wagon train over at the fort. Lorraine's going to ride up to Bighorn with them. You see, I was supposed to wait until Bert brought the herd up to the basin to get married, but, well, I met the parson, and uh, I sort of talked him into coming down here, and, well, Cupid and Mr. Wishbone did the rest. Yeah, that figures. Uh, well, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. That's what I always say. Is that what you always say? So don't you worry, Mr. Yates. I'll be gone first thing in the morning. Uh, well, what's everybody standing around like it's a funeral for? This is an old-timey celebration. Congratulations, Bert. Uh, must she dish up some of those wedding fiddles for Rowdy? Hey! Let's get some music going here! <laughs> hey, you heard what Mr. Yates said. This is supposed to be a celebration. I don't know, Lorraine. I think maybe we should have waited. What for, Bert? We're in love. That's all that matters. This ain't my dance. I'm making it mine. <laughs> I hope so, Lorraine. I hope so. Nice ride? Well, I sure had better. How's it look? Well, yeah, just like always. Out of you're in trouble. Yeah, well, looks like the last three days in the basin are gonna be long ones. Well, the only thing is, you ain't going to Bighorn. What are you talking about? That's the way Mr. Favor and I laid it out before he left. Did he uh, lay out the Cheyenne, too? Rowdy, I, I had a talk with the lieutenant at the fort. They've had six fights in the past ten days. The whole South Trail is just covered with our little red brothers. How do we get through? Well, the boys in blue claim we got to swing due north. North? Ah, that means we lose three or four days if we go that way. Well, might save your hair. What about water north? That's well, not good. But there's a creek on southeast of here, a few miles ahead. Could follow it for about two days. That is, if there's water in it. Yeah, if there ain't. If there ain't, it's gonna get mighty thirsty. Come on, my shit, get going. We haven't got all day. Well, yes, sir. Oh, 
of all the ten-fingered, bird-brained, ox-tote... Mercy, pick that stuff up! <laughs> oh, Bert, I know I promised, but the thought of leaving you... It won't be for long. Just four days at the most, and then we'll be together again. On our own land. On our own land. Sounds like something at the end of a rainbow. It looks like it, too. Blue mountains and green grass. The prettiest little valley you ever saw. It's like a new world, Lorraine. It's a place where there's just today and tomorrow. And no yesterdays. There aren't any yesterdays for us, Bert. Our world started when you put this ring on my finger. Bert, there's been a little change of plan. We're going to be heading north. That'll leave you about 40, 50 miles from the basin when we get to the river. Well, once we get there, I guess I'll just drift my cows back on down the river. By yourself? I got no choice. Well, I want you to know. What about you, ma'am? Are you about ready to pull out? Yes, I'm due at the fort by noon. The uh, wagon master gave me till then before we started north. I wouldn't rush it, ma'am. The wagon train ain't going no place. Army's got trail closed off. Cheyenne? Yeah, that's uh, that's why we're changing and going north. Well, I'm going to need a little help cutting my 40 head out of the herd. Oh, they can go along with us, and you can take them from the river. I can't leave my wife here alone. There's someone she can stay with? No one. I'll start cutting out my beef. Well, wait a minute, Bert. You said you had to sell out, and you got everything you own in this here wagon. What are you going to do with the cattle? I'm not going to leave my wife here alone. It's all right. We'll manage. Sure we will. Thanks anyway, Roddy. All right. All right, she can go along with us as far as the river, then you're on your own. But stay close to Wishbone, will you? Well, what are you looking at? I'm moving, I'm moving. When are you going to learn to make a decent cup of coffee? I didn't know it was going to turn out like this, Roddy. If I'd known she was going to... Wishbone, I want this wagon moving. Now. You know, he's not really as tough as he makes out to be. Mm hmm but like he said, get these wagons moving. That tailgate up. You got everything nailed down that rattles? Yes, sir. All right, you better get back with the herd and we'll take care of the missus. All right, thanks, Wish. Take a look here. All right. So you just stick close to me and everything will be all right. All right. Wish. Everything's going to be just wonderful. You didn't need to overdo it. Too easy, Roddy. Well, don't try it then. At least till we get there. Hey, you know, a 44 comes in kind of handy on the trail. I don't use them. Suit yourself. You'll be riding drag, and uh, we got about 800 head of broken S cattle we had about a week ago. They're still not quite settled yet. It's Cliff Stanton's brand. That's right. Stanton's uh, kind of a man who expects us to handle his cattle real special. He's a man that expects too much. 
Sounds like you know Stan. I know him. All right, hit him up! a day chasing that son of Satan. Well, it's Denton's, isn't he? Yeah, he just plain don't want to leave home. Well, keep an eye on him. If he takes all, he's liable to take half the herd with him. Well, that's no good lop-eared tick. Brother, you better pass the word and take it easy on that water. I just had a good look at that bed ground I was figuring on for tonight. There's water there, ain't there? Yeah, some, but there sure ain't enough to water the whole herd out. From now on out, it gets worse. Uh, you tell the rest of them in there? Nope. I figured that was your job. Be a little short of water tonight, so we're gonna hold them up and send the cattle in 20 at a time. So, uh, double up the night guard, will you? We can double up the night guard. We start putting those critters through 20 head at a time, we're gonna all be working all night. We'll all be working all night. Start holding them back! Don't let them get to water all at once! <laughs> How come the good Lord only gave you this oak to burn? It's all fired hard to cut. So you can work up an appetite. By the time I'm through cutting, I'm too tired to eat. Well, maybe that's the way the good Lord intended it. So the trail boss could save on his expenses. When I was young, I used to wait on my old master and hand his plate. And pass the bottle when he got dry And brush away the blue tail fly Jimmy crack corn and I don't care Jimmy crack corn and I don't care Jimmy crack corn and I don't care My master's gone away You know, she makes it sound like She really likes scrubbing clothes Well, that's them wedding bells, Jim Makes the world sit up on his beam end uh, everything seemed like rainbows and uh, fiddle music, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever think about taking that long, big step? Me? Oh, yeah, it, uh, it crossed my mind once or twice. How about you? Well, uh, you won't say nothing. No, no, I'll take it to my grave. Well, uh, it happened up in Ellsworth, though. Three, four years back, I, I even got the ring. Paid 45 good, hard-earned iron men for it, too. And I got right up to the church, and that's when it happened. Yeah, what happened? Well, I, I tried to go one way, and well, my boots went the other. I fought them. I fought them real good, but, uh, well, they just took off with me in them. And I'll tell you, there's times when I can still hear this old gal squalling. My master's gone away. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My 
the master's gone away. Oh, wow, well, Mr. Stanton. You're about the last person I expected to see out here. Well, I didn't think anyone would follow me this far. Not even you. After what you've done to me, I'd follow you no matter how far. Just what did I do? Chasing off after a man like you were afraid to face decent people. Bert and I are married. Sure. That's right, married. It still doesn't make any difference you're going home. I am home. I'm with my husband. You mind telling me what this is about? I'll tell you what it's all about. She's run off from home. She's my daughter. I'm sorry, Mr. Yates. I didn't think you had to know about any of this. I was your daughter, Papa, but now I'm Bert's wife. Not to me, you aren't. I won't have a daughter that's married to a man of that kind. Cliff, it's over and done with. Maybe you best forget about it. No, it's not over and done with. Not as long as there's a breath of air left in me. I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, and you're going with me. Oh? How, Papa? At the end of a rope? Because that's the only way you're going to get me home. That's up to you, young lady. One end of the rope or the other, you're going home. This isn't your brigade, Stanton. Lorraine isn't any backwoods soldier. She's my wife. As long as she wants to keep it that way, that's the way it's going to stay. For a man with a yellow streak down his back a yard wide, them is mighty big words. Why don't you get behind her? It's safer for you that way, Mr. Coward. She stays, Stanton. You're wrong, Mr. Coward. I'm taking her back. Unless you want to strap on a gun and try and stop me. Like there's going to be no gunplay around here. There's a cattle drive, not a private battlefield. Where's Favor? He's up in Denver. Then you're in charge. I want him off of this cattle drive, and I want him off now. Look, Stanton, you may own 800 head, but you ain't running this drive. Now, Harvey signed on to go up to Bighorn. That's where he's going. Now, you listen to me, Yates. You listen to me, Stanton. As far as I'm concerned, your daughter's legally married. Now, if you want to do something about that, you can either in a courthouse or behind a badge, you wait till you get to Bighorn after the drive. Cliff, there's nothing you can do. Maybe, maybe not. Any objections if we ride along to Bighorn with you? No, there's no objections. You got that right. Just don't start any trouble that I'm going to have to finish. Understand? I've known Cliff Stanton for 20 years. Once he makes up his mind, he never changes it. Miss Lorraine, I'm sorry. Reb, I'm not going back. You could tell him that for me. All right, Bert, get back to the herd. Well, what I said about the trouble, that goes for both of you. Well, if there's any trouble, Rowdy, you'll have to start it. Cliff. Save your breath, Rep. She's married, Cliff. You can't do anything about that. I can make her a widow. <laughs> Should be. I raised him myself. <laughs> Rightly took his first step for him. That's a little important, that first step. Almost as important as the second one, the one he takes on his own. That would depend upon uh, which direction that step takes him. I guess that would be up to him, wouldn't it? You know, I might agree with you, Rowdy, except that uh, Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person, and Miss Lorraine is the only thing he's got left. So it's just natural he'd want it to go his way rather than Bert Harvey's. Why? What's it got against him? When the war broke out, Cliff Stanton took a commission. He formed a brigade from our county, and Bert and his kid brother rode along with us. Did real fine, too, until we tried to take a hill at Gettysburg. We got through the artillery all right, and about halfway up the hill. But Bert's kid brother got killed. Something must have busted in Bert. 
Anyway, he ran. He ran clean out of the war. That wasn't enough, he came on back home. He tried to live with us, with what he'd done. Yeah, I could see that it'd take a little doing. Yeah. He took an awful beating, but he never fought back, leastways not with a gun. Miss Lorraine was the only one that stood up for him. Well, it's like I said. Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person. Yeah, well, so am I, especially when this herd's concerned. Owner or no owner, if Stanton gives me any trouble, he's going to have to answer to the law. That's fine, Riley. Except then, it might be too late. Sure gives a man a crawlish. I know what you mean. He'll be steering that herd's ready to run. The old bunch quitter I was telling you about, he's been on his feet all night just looking for a chance to run. Well, if he makes it, you better let him go. If he gets caught up there in those brakes, we'll have a hard time chasing him out. There he goes. Keep an eye on the rest of on my head. The herd! Bring out the rest of the crew and try to turn them. Try to head them in! Twenty head short, near as I can make it. Twenty head of mine. Well, that's too surprising. I mean, you got more cattle in the herd than anyone else. I want to know what you're going to do about it. Any sign? Headed back in those breaks. Take two or three days to get them out of there. Well, there's your answer. We can't spend two days around here without water. And I'm out twenty head of prime beef. Is that it? That isn't a bad percentage, Stan. Twenty out of eight hundred. You know, on a trail drive, there's a risk. I'm willing to take a risk any time, but I'm not going to stand by for deliberate planned loss. You want to say that plainer? Yes, Mr. Coward, I'll say it plainer. If those had been your cattle, they'd never have gotten away, and that run would have never started. You wait a minute. I was with him when it happened. You got any reason for thinking somebody would purposely drive off 20 head of your cattle? When a man acts like a coyote, he starts to think like one. Be easy to double back and pick up that beef, wouldn't it, Mr. Coward? Bert, you don't have to take that from him just because he's my father. Don't turn your back because of me. It might be I'm not doing it for you.
I told you to put Harvey on flank. I did. He just didn't show up. He'll do what he's told or he'll get off this drive. Where's your husband? Well, I thought he was with the cattle. He's supposed to be, but I haven't seen him lately. Well, he went out early this morning, and when he didn't come back, I thought maybe you were still having trouble and you needed the extra help. Why? Is something wrong? No, that's all right. Harvey seems to be missing. You know anything about it? Didn't take him long to show his stripe, did he? I didn't do anything to him. Didn't even have to. Well, you take two hours and relieve the other half of the crew. He'll take two. Yates, how long do you expect to keep up this pace? Till we get to Waters, Tim. he walked out on you a year from now? He didn't walk out. He'll be back. Lorraine, I've lived a lot of years. I've done a lot of things. Some good and some bad. But always the meaning was in the right place where you were concerned. You believe that, don't you? Mm hmm? Yes. And believe this. When your mother died, I promised her that you'd get better than you gave. Now, you're not going to get that with half a man. Father, you don't understand. It doesn't matter what Bert was or is. He's my husband. But Lorraine, he's no good. How can you say that? I know if a man runs once when the going isn't easy, he'll do it again. Maybe next time it'll be you instead of his brother that stays behind. Then that'll be my problem and not yours, Father. You know, when I married Bert, I knew you'd come after me. I knew just what it would be like. And you know what I dreaded the most? I dreaded the day that you would push Bert too far, because then we'd both find out what can happen to a man who just... who just can't run anymore. Now what? Well, it looks like somebody's trying to join up with us. I could only find 16 heads, Stanton. The cows are so important to you, I'll give you four of my own. What you say about the color of the stripe down his back? Grandstand plays don't make a man. And neither does pushing a few head of cattle. I didn't see you pushing them in. Forget it, Cliff. He's earned his chance. There hasn't been a chance for him, not for eight years. You don't know that. Not for sure. That's just it, Reb. Not knowing for sure. That's why I've got to spill a yell out of him so much that there won't be any doubt. Not for any of us.
fine thing. Moonlight and music, Cupid behind every tree. The ink's still wet on my license, and I have to go looking for my husband. I'm sorry, Lorraine. And I had some thinking to do. Anything that two heads can't solve quicker than one? Not when there's no solution. Oh, Bert. Father doesn't make that much difference. Not if we don't let him. It's not him, Lorraine. It's me. Six white horses, a golden coach, and a 50-acre garden of Eden. <laughs> Big Horn is just a valley, Lorraine. A valley with water and grass and not much else. Maybe I made too much of it. Maybe we should have waited until you knew what you were getting into. You mean father is right? You know, you had me worried there for a minute. But Lorraine... Bert, it doesn't matter what's waiting for us in your valley. What matters is what we bring to it. You and I. And you know something? We've got our dream if we just open our eyes wide enough to see it. This is it. You and I together, this is our Garden of Eden. And nothing's ever going to change that. Not ever. You were right. Two heads can solve a problem faster than one. It comes in bunches. There ain't enough in that creek to water ten head, let alone three thousand. Beyond that? Well, the next three creeks are bone dry. Well, I guess that don't leave us much choice but to head north to Alkali Sink, does it? Well, there's two. Let's head north and hope. Well, better go tell the men. I can't put it any plainer than that. It's going to get worse before it gets any better. We're going to have to spend maybe three days and nights in the saddle. Well, a drive this long without water has been made before. We'll do it again. Heading north takes me further away from Bighorn. I might get you closer to water, though. Yeah, when we get to Alkali Sink, if there's water there, I'll spare a few of the men, help you take your cattle where you're going. And if there isn't any water at Alkali Sink? Well, no other choice. We're just going to have to keep moving north. Well, I'll have to leave you there, then. Quitting, Harvey? I promised my wife a home and a ranch on the Bighorn Basin. I intend to see that she gets it. Is that what you want? Stranded a hundred miles from where you're going with 40 head of cows? Jim, how are you feeling? Tell you right, I feel like I've been to an all-night dance and everybody stepped on my toes. Yeah, well, a little saddle time will be just right for you then. Uh, gotta find some water. Well, that's what I'm paid for. Wish you and Mushy get up to that spring. Fill everything you can find full of water, so we'll have enough for the horses. Anything else? Yeah, maybe if you know a prairie. Get started, Mush. You want to talk about it? What's there to talk about? Well, maybe you can fool some of them, but you can't fool me. There isn't any water up at Alkali Sink. You get some sort of a crystal ball or something? Well, I don't need a crystal ball. I've been on these drives long enough. I can feel bad trouble. Well, what do you want me to do? Just quit and let the cattle drop right here? Well, no. Just keep doing what you're doing. But sometimes it helps to talk about it.
this. There's no other way, Roddy. Men had to have rest. Yeah, what good's it gonna do? No word from Quince. No idea how much further we have to go like this. Alkali Sink, see it right up ahead. All right. You're gonna find out in a little bit anyway. There ain't no water in Alkali Sink. Why did you have to lie about it? You said there was water there. I didn't say there was water there. I said if there isn't water there, we're going to cut straight through north. Quince is out there looking for a trail right now. Now get back in the saddles, everyone. I want this herd moving. You know, heading north takes me that much further away from Bighorn. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, Bert. Well, I guess I won't be any closer to where I'm going than I am right now. I hate to ask it, but I could use a little help to cut my 40 head out of the herd. You gotta take 40 head across this country alone? He can try. We can both try. What are you trying to prove, Harvey? I ain't trying to prove anything, Stanton. Those 40 head and that bit of grass down at Bighorn are all Lorraine and I have. Man's got no choice, he plays the hand that's dealt him. All right, Harvey. You win. I've got $5,000 cash here. It's all yours. Take it, get on your horse and start riding. Don't stop. You can have a lot of good times on $5,000. Alone. You had your say, Stanton. I've had it. Now start running. to do that, didn't you, Father? You had to find a way to push me out of your life. Lorraine! Lorraine! Use that again, Cliff. You're gonna have to use it on me first. Back, Stanton, and you called him a coward? There's nothing else I can do. I had a reason. Maybe Bert had a reason at Gettysburg, too. But nobody took the time to ask him. I did. And I got my answer, but that just wasn't good enough for you, was it, Father? You couldn't just let us be. Bert, tell him, please. Let's get this over with. Is it that important to you? Not to me. To you. All right. All right, Stanton. I had a reason. I killed my brother. We were halfway up the hill, at least those of us that got through the artillery. I fired, and then I, I ducked behind this wall to reload. And there was a yell. I shot before I really saw anything. He didn't say anything. He just looked at me and he died. I put my rifle down. I turned back. Because I couldn't kill again. Not for flag or country or not even for what you call honor. That's the way it was and that's the way it is. All right, Stanton, we got a herd to move. You're not going to leave him there, are you? It's the way you want it, isn't it? The wish holder. Uh, there might not be any need for you. You mean he's dead? No, he ain't dead. Far from it. Yeah. Let me have a look. No, it's not too bad. Grab some whiskey in my saddlebag. Get it, will you? You're just too darn stubborn to get out of the way of a prairie fire, aren't you? But he's just stubborn enough to make a darn good cattleman. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Lorraine. I only wanted you to have the best. I guess you had it all the time, and I didn't realize it. Here, it's going to smart a little bit. 
here. I just hold that on there. And don't tell me you two are going to drive that herd to Bighorn by yourself, because Reb and me are throwing in with you just as soon as we get to water. Well, Mr. Rowdy, you had me scared here for a minute. I thought you were just going to leave him. I knew he wouldn't all along. Oh, yeah? What made you so sure? Because like I told Mushy, you're not near as tough as you like to be. Yeah, well, tough enough to move these cows out, and you better be, too. I think this is some sort of a picnic. Get moving. Could have been the Crown Brothers. Take back to heading for Cougar Run Canyon. Mile, this better be worth it. What you gonna do for eight? Same as you. Turn around, go back home, 600 miles. But I ain't going home poor. Yeah, me neither. I like this kind of life. Hey, you. Do you speak English? Better than you, fella. your name? Well, they call me Joe. Joe Spanish. Where are you from, brother? Albuquerque. Where are you from? North Platte, North Dakota. Yeah? Where are you headed? Where are you headed? Meet some friends I got. Same as me. Cougar Run Canyon? Cougar Run Canyon. Well? Let's go. Right, brother. But after you. Uh-uh. Forget it. Oh, it's late. Howdy. 
want you to go back to Oxford. That's the nearest town. There's a man there that we need. Now, don't say anything that'll give us away, and uh, don't get in a fight with him. Just bring him back in one piece. Quiet and no trouble. He's a trail boss. He shouldn't have any problems spotting him with that beat-up pad of his. We'll be waiting for you. Don't feel too imposed on. I gotta get one, too. You mean someone's telling you what to do? You might say that, in a manner of speaking. You know, this is gonna be bigger than I thought. Let's go, Spanish. Oh, uh, sorry, Joseph. Not this time. Hey, what do you mean, not this time, you big cheapskate? How come? Girl, favor, you renegade. Step in here and stop talking Good so much. Good to see you, Bruce. Sit down, friend. sit down. <laughs> Why, you look terrible. Hmm? One of these days, you're going to feel successful enough to buy a decent hat. Oh, what an ever loving this woman with that hat. I'm just about getting it broken right. <laughs> Girl, how have you been? Fine, fine, Bruce. What's this about you going on the wagon? Who said I? Oh, that. Nothing. How's Rowdy? Oh, that big dumb kid. What are you going to say about him except he's healthy? And Phoebe? Fine. Just fine. Off on a trip. Hey, how about that? Good. Where to? She's got the kids with her, too. Soon she returns, we want to have you for dinner again. Thursday? As long as she doesn't hawk me about uh, having a new hat. Well, Gail, how about it? Are you uh, ready to sell to me at a huge loss? I always. Why not? Now, you know the market? You better believe I do. Three dollars a head, hmm? Uh, coffee? What's this? You're trying to stuff me up with coffee instead of booze? Pray tell, Gil. Uh, I'm offering $24 a head. Oh, at least you used to get me schlock it up with the good champagne before you start playing silly games. How about it? You are joking me, ain't you, bro? No, not joking. What is it, bro? Really in trouble? Gil, I... I have to make a low offer on your herd. Without any advance this time. I guess if you want me to know why, you would have told me, so I won't ask. Thanks, Gil. I... I'm temporarily short, that's all. I see. And I can't go higher than $24. But there's no other buyers, Gil. It's me or nothing. No other buyers? How come? Can't tell you. All I know is I'm the only buyer in the area at the moment. And I'm a $24 buyer. Bro, you know I'd like to help you out, but the owners back in Texas won't go for it. Just this once, girl. You, you really have to have the deal on those terms, bro? Yep, I do. I, I can't go that far, but I'll split the difference. $28 a head, 48 hours to exercise the option. Girl, sell me the herd low. Oh, oh, I can't, not at that price. All right, take it easy. Look, I'll... Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I, can, I can forego my commission and get that back at any time. 10% from $28, it, that brings it down to twenty-five, twenty dollars ahead. Can't you come down that extra dollar twenty? Bro. If I hold out a hundred head and sell them to the restaurants, it might make up the difference. Is that all right? That's a deal. Uh, you want some coffee now? Coffee? Are you kidding? I need a drink.
Mr. Favor? That's right. You got some beef for sale? No, I'm afraid not. My name is Burnside, and this is my partner, Mr. Spry. Hey. We come 50 miles, want to offer you $32 a head. Well, I am sorry about that. I'm afraid I've just sold the herd, though. You think the man you just sold to uh, would like to make a profit? Of course he would. You want to buy the whole herd? Indeed we do, Mr. Favor. Where can we find him? Up at the hotel. Do you take us to him? Sure, why not? Well, good. First, I want to get uh, my contracts and my saddlebags. Just take me a minute. Mr. Favor, can you come over and look at these contracts? Now empty your gun. Now you're going with us. Somebody wants to talk to you. Oh, say, maybe we'd better stop over at the hotel anyways. Um, well, if I don't pay my bill, and well, Don't I'm you worry about your bill. We'll pay it. Now let's go. time in the post offices. Yeah. Partner here is probably Joe Spanish, huh? I bet you got good marks in school, Favor. The rest of the kids couldn't stand you. I was just wondering how come two such famous desperados felt the need to work together. Well, who said we needed to, Favor? Well, if you don't, how come you're doing somebody else's dirty work? Must be an awful big man, huh? We better move out, Bowie. Let's go. Come on. we do that? Must have slipped our minds. Miss Favor, you know that carrying a loaded gun is dangerous. Pow! <laughs> so as we could get him out of town, we just let him look proper. But he couldn't harm a fly. For your favor, huh? I'm Bolt Carson. Now, him I never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you better take it easy, Favor. This one's a master with brass knuckles. He's stupid, but he fights good. Oh, you're supposed to be so good with a knife, huh, boy? Well, I'll fight you any time. Right now, if you want to. Why don't you go beat up on some old ladies, Bo? <laughs> now go ahead, will you? <laughs>
Gibbs. Favor. Gil Favor. Gil Favor? The trail boss? That's right. What are you doing here? You know how come you're here? No, I don't. Boris Denver. I'm a trail boss, too. No, oh, not as big or as important a one as you are, but I make a living at it. Here, those swine came and took me right away from my herd. I had to leave over 700 head out there when they're a 14-year-old boy. I'm promising you I'm going to see every one of them behind bars. They're not going to get away with this. By any chance, have you ever seen the men before that brought you in here? No. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Why? Why, I said. Nothing. Favor, you're holding something back. Now, you speak up. Look, uh, first off, I would suggest that uh, you calm down, Mr. Denver. Calm down? You know, I thought I was lucky when I found you in here. I thought that you was a man who was used to standing up for his rights. I wonder if they would have picked you up if they realized they were picking up a bus. Uh... That's not a straight answer, Favor. Mr. Denver, do you realize that the young man brought you in here, goes by the name of Malloy Slake. I mean, that was Malloy Slake? Yeah. I thought he was doing 20 years. So did I. I let myself think I was being brought here to pay for a crossing toll. This ain't no crossing toll. Oh, that it isn't. Hey, did they search you when they brought you here? Uh, I know. Me neither. So it ain't no robbery, neither. I'm afraid you're right, Mr. Denver. Afraid I'm right? Then you think it's something worse? Mr. Denver, I don't know why we're here, but I do know that these are very dangerous men. And it seems to me that it would be the smart thing for you to take it easy for a while. Frighten. The great Gil Favor, frighten. I would prefer to think of it as being discreet, very discreet. There is something very big going on here, it seems. And it seems like we're not big enough to fight it at the moment. Favor, you disappoint me. I just wonder who is behind it. Gotta be somebody bigger than Malloy Slake. And I can't even imagine who that might be. Now, I heard them mention the name of Ryan Powers. That could be the Crown Brothers. You sure? Well, I've seen their picture now paper a couple of times. He sent us ahead. We're to say that he'll be here momentarily and to see that everything's prepared. Don't you think he might be tired after that long ride? Are you Lois Lake? That's right. Hey, you're right. No, that's the biggest outlaw in America. You ever seen him? Nope. I don't think you'll worry about a rest. Did you get the gold? Yeah, I had somebody get it. Good. Sounds like a bank job. I'm Harley Lear. Each of these small sacks contains about $3,000 in gold. See, if you want us to smuggle, the answer flat out is no. Argumentative, isn't he? No, we don't want you to smuggle it. We want you to accept it. By we, I don't mean us. I mean Ryan Powers. Ryan Powers wants you to accept it. And who is Ryan Powers? You. You must be Lloyd Slate. Well, I had no idea the deadliest man in America would look so boyish, so unworried. That is Ryan Powers. 
Excuse me. Well, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy getting this conglomeration of the most wanted men in the U.S. together. Well, now, which is which? Never mind, we'll have time for that. All I have to say is if you're wanted, I can't figure out why. You are without a doubt the most repulsive, meanest, ugliest looking bunch of scum I've ever seen. And who'd want that is more than I can understand. You couldn't look any worse if you tried. Shake hands with Ryan Powers. Horse flesh and toilet water. What a smell. Come on now, Favor, shake hands. The exchanging of a grip means nothing except to seal an agreement, that is, and we don't have any agreements now, do we? <laughs> All we did was shake hands man to man without any obligation. Nothing to be afraid of, Harley. Leave it open. I wouldn't touch his money with a ten-foot pole. I wouldn't do that, Mr. Denver. Why not? Well, if for no other reason, then. It's just say it seems sort of wasteful. You sell out fast, don't you? I'll uh, hang on to it for you. You change your mind and you want it back, just let me know. Loy, you sure brought me a dandy. Well, I'm just trying to do my part. What's his name? Horace Denver. Mm. And he's real argumentative. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a real bobcat. <laughs> That's good. Hey, uh, tell me something. Uh, what do you want with him? He's part of my plan, Slake. You'll find out when the time comes. Now, bring Gil Favor to me. Harley! I want everyone outside. How do you size up uh, Favor? Well, he's just what we want. Is he going to need uh, influencing? I expect so. I'm distressed to hear that, Ryan. Harley, if you have any more of these adolescent remorses, you can leave. I can't be concerned with what you think. There is much too much to do. I'm sure you'll want to meet everyone. By now, you have a good idea of the caliber of men we've brought together. And purely for the purpose, I might add, of meeting you. Gentlemen, Mr. Favor, probably the best cattle boss in the United States, and therefore in the world. Meet Lois Lake, young, eager, cool. 
You've heard of him. He's wanted everywhere, but we've got him. Meyer Trask, a man who's never known fear and never known love, a dangerous foe. Jasper Rowe and Copper Roberts, they'll take anything in the Southwest that isn't bolted down and then sell it for liquor and riotous living. Bowie Fisk and Joe Spanish, I believe you know already. Bolt Carson, Cooley Addison, you met on the trail. Two renowned almost as much as Lois Lake, the Crown Brothers. Mason Crown, Wilson Crown. They've probably had their hands on as much gold as the men in the mint. They haven't got a cent to show for it. Their loss is our gain. One newly calloused fellow who rode 800 miles just to meet you. Harley Lear, my left-hand man who keeps track of my many plans. And lastly, but not leastly, Levi Windsor, a member of the underworld in good standing in our contact with them. It's a full life, full life. Now go get your roommate. We're going to have a little meeting in the living room. To prevent any misunderstanding at this meeting, put all your guns over here. time, Mr. Denver. Is that so? And it's not going to help anymore after we hear their plans. I'll just play a waiting game for a while. You know, that big, fine reputation of yours is just so much hogwash, isn't it? Were you just making a deal with Ryan Power? I was just being interviewed like he was. Interviewed? Now, what makes you think I was being interviewed? You go on, loco. Uh-huh. So the man lied to me. What did you expect? Look, whatever happens, do me one thing. Just sit tight for now. I don't like this any more than you do. Believe me. country cross-industry group of financial wizards in the United States. I'll tell you what I mean. We are taking over the beef industry, gentlemen, from top to bottom, all the way from hooved cattle on up to restaurants. We can do this because beef is the only industry that turns on one man, the trail boss. If we can control the cattle under his command, then that industry is ours. Think about that. We are going to organize the trail bosses. All of them. They'll be forced to deal with our people acting as buyers at prices we set. And once we have that cattle under control, we will control all prices. All the way from the railhead on up to the restaurants. One major trail boss setting the pattern by selling to our men will cause others to follow and fall in line. They'll have to. The one reason will be that there won't be any other place for them to go to. And we have you outlaws helping us, preventing the old buyers from re-establishing new avenues of commerce. 
Well, that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. All we have to do is do it and keep others from doing it, too. I don't think we'll run into much resistance. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mr. Denver? Does this appeal to you? Wouldn't you like to be rich instead of puny like you are? No, I wouldn't. Easy, Denver, easy. What you're proposing is an evil, vicious scheme. It'll destroy the meat business as we know it. And I, for one, want no part of it now or ever. And I'll do everything in my power to prevent you taking the cattle business over. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly, Mr. Denver. How do you like the way we get things done? Are you impressed? Oh, I was impressed, all right. I venture to say that we all were. Then I take it we can count on you for your help and advice. I'll do everything I can. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. You won't be sorry, Favor. None of us will. We're all going to be very rich from this, and we're all going to be very good friends. What's the matter? You one of us, or ain't you? I don't feel like sitting down. Is that all right with you? No, it ain't all right with me. And it ain't all right with them, either. I thank you for the seat. <laughs> That's better. Yesterday, a churchgoer. Today, I outlaw. How's that for a colorful career on the range? <laughs> Spanish. Stop acting so ludicrous. Mr. Favor. Well, are you ready? Ready? Ready for what? I don't like seeing you on edge, Favor. You're not having second thoughts about anything, are you? I told you I'd help you, and I will. Now, what more do you want? Now, look, Favor, you don't have to sit over there with those men if you don't want to. I want you to think of yourself as an executive in this operation, not a handyman like these others. Thank you for the promotion. Set up the table where I told you and bring the buyer out. We've got to close this fast and nail Favor. He's getting jumpy. Right. Shouldn't let it get to your favor. Oh, is that? You looking to be friendly? Well, we're going to be working together. Uh, just hope under better conditions. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I don't like unnecessary killing. Oh? Favor! Over here! Sit down. Sit down, my friend. We're going to have some pleasure by doing a little business. Making our first money together. And under the eyes of all these witnesses. Now, you just sign here. Now, this says you sell one of your herd to one of our buyers for $24 a head. I can't do that. 
this line here. I've already got an option out on my herd. Options don't mean a thing. Might be some legal repercussions. You wouldn't want that. There won't be any legal repercussions. Now sign, Favor. Sign it. All right. Hello, girl. Hello, bro. Thank you. Witness? Everyone inside. It's time for Mr. Faber's lecture to begin. trails that have cattle on them at the moment. Each has a large herd. The Santa Fe, the Jones, the Plumber, and the Chisholm. Tie up these herds, plus mine, and you control the four major herds in America that are ready for market. Some eight to ten thousand head of prime beef, which can swing the market any way you want to. Two days before these herds reach their destination, a buyer, one of our men naturally, We'll arrive and start negotiating for the sale of the herd. The trail boss will sell to him because somehow or other, no other buyers will show up. If by any chance the trail boss becomes suspicious or hostile, another buyer will be brought into the picture. The two men will get angry with each other and start uh, competing in price, each trying to outbid the other. That should pretty well cinch it and convince him. But we shouldn't get greedy and start out at too low a price. To keep it realistic, we should start out gradually. One last thing. The most important thing is to convince a trail boss that you are on the level. The best way to do that is be on the level. If you can honestly say that the favor herd has been sold to you, and the other trail bosses will sell to you too, and the next group of buyers going out will be able to say just exactly that. And that is why I have been asked to come here, to set the pattern. Right. Any questions? Yeah. Well, what if prices are real low and there's no market for beef? That's just the situation we're looking for. When there's an extra supply of beef, we'll buy real cheap and keep it off the market. After the prices have gone up, we'll make a killing. We'll have all the big companies, including the railroads, begging. Anything else? And you men can go. You'll get your instructions tonight and ride out first thing in the morning. I'm impressed. I don't mind telling you I misjudged that man. Under that hat he wears, there's a real brain. You're going to be a great asset, Favor. Afraid there's a little bit of a liability under this hat, too. You see, I want a piece of the action, too. A what? That's right. You want me so bad, pay me. And if I don't? I guess you could kill me, but you see, I'm single, oh, no ties, and so I haven't got too much to lose. But you, with your little scheme, do, and I figure that gives me a pretty good bargaining position. I like a hard-headed businessman. Good. And uh, why don't we send him on his way and thrash out the details? Get rid of Brew? Well, there's no sense for anybody else to know just how much you're going to be taken for. You heard the man. Get going. Bring Mr. Brewster's horse out front. Goodbye, Brewster. And remember, be very careful about the way you handle things. Well, you 
can forget the big smile now, Mr. Powers. I wasn't fooling. I think this is a pretty good chance for me. I'll want 5%. 2% and it's a deal. I've just run out of any helpful information. 4%. Good for a start. Next year, another 3.5%. We'll see. Oh, I'll want it in writing. Why in writing? Now, that's the way all the uh, big moguls do it, ain't it? Well, all right. Good. Allie? Mr. Powers will uh, want you to write out a little note to me. And I want to have it read to all the men so that they know who has the say-so in buying. Favor, you're getting a little power mad, aren't you? Well, uh, don't we all? All right, everybody inside. Just finish this. All of you, come on. Mr. Powers wants to talk to you. Just be a few minutes. As a matter of fact, I want you men to know that I'm giving favor a percentage of the profits. How much? Uh, how much? Four. You'll start at four. You'll see how things go. If they go well, the next year he'll get more. In the meantime, he'll be in charge of all the selling and buying of the cattle. You'll take all your orders directly from him and me on occasion. favor. to go along, Gil. They threaten my family. I had to play a waiting game, same as you. It'll be all right. I managed to get them out of town. But I had to play along, hoping it wouldn't be found out. Waiting game's a bad game, Hand. The worst. One consolation, no? What's that? Where did this ever get out? It'll set us up as being two of the best cattlemen in the business. 
What else do you think Phoebe'd want you for dinner? Yeah, that's on Thursday night. I'd kind of like to make that if we're still alive. You'll be alive. What makes you so sure? You've got to be. I owe you money. You won't let yourself get killed. Got a point there, Brew. Got a point. Uh -uh. Go on outside. Go on outside and get those guns. Did you hear what I said? Go on out and get those weapons. You go, Powers. It was your idea. We'll all go out together. There's only two out there. I said you go. Now, look. There's a half dozen rifles on those horses. When I go out the front door, you go out the side window. They can't cover both. Bowie. All right. being sore about me messing up the deal, but let me explain something first. Very good, Slake. Let him have it. Tell me something, Harley. Were you for or against the murder of Horace Henry? I was against it. You know I was. All right, then shut up. You understand? It never would have worked anyways. It just would have forced him to import foreign beef. I don't want to hear anything more about the cattle business favor. <sighs> Robbing trains is a good, simple life. All right, let's get out of here. That's careless of me. The gold. Now, if I was a good-hearted outlaw that you read about in the newspapers, why, I'd probably leave the gold with you for Denver's wife and the child. But I'm not. I'm heartless. Well, I guess we can work out as partners. Why not? But after you, brother. I always thought a trail drive would be an exciting life full of adventures. 
Well, maybe it will be when I'm a real drover. But right now, I don't seem to be too important. All my adventures are peeling potatoes and carrying water, washing pots and pans, and itching Mr. Wishbone's back when it scratches. Well, I'm the cook's louse for Mr. Favor's trail drive. Men call me Mushy because, well, I guess maybe because it's my name. Mushy! Mushy! Just once. Just once what? Dollar? Just once. I wish I'd get a letter, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, what would you do with a letter? Mr. Favor? He doesn't make that much of a meal. Mr. Favor? Mr. Favor? Mm. Uh, Scarlet? Hey. Hey. Scarlet? Chuck? Uh, wait a minute, will you? What are I you doing? You opened yours. I'll get you one. About time. Mr. H. Mushgrove, the third. Sedalia Trail. Mushgrove. That must be Mushy. Hey, Mushy, you got a letter. Don't you want it? Like Mr. Wishbone says, I'm mighty well told I want it, Mr. Rowdy. Thank you. Now, how about that? I waited in town two days to get this mail, and Mushy's the only one who bothered to thank me. Nothing to be ashamed of, boy. Lots of people can't read. Would you read it for me, Miss Wishbone? Dear Harkness. Harkness Mushgrove? After all these months, I finally found out what you were doing. I suppose it is normal for boys to run away from their family at least once in their lives, but what kind of a boy is it who joins a cattle drive? Uh, at any rate, I love you and forgive you, and I am taking a stage to Owens Mills so that when you reach there, I will be ready to take you away from all of those nasty cows and bring you home, love mother. Uh, I ain't through yet. P.S. If I don't find you at Owens Mills, I'll keep right on until I catch up with you. What's a P.S., Mr. Wishbone? Oh, well, uh, it's uh, something you got to mind, like your P's and Q's. P's and Q's? Uh, what do I do with them now? Well, you got nothing to worry about. We was at Owens Mills a month ago, and your mother wasn't there. Well, you heard my ma's P.S. She'll find me if she has to walk all the way. Well, I guess some boys just shouldn't leave their mamas, Mushy. Or some mamas shouldn't leave their boys. All right. You've got other things to do. All of you. If you've finished eating, get out and relieve the noon hawks. Would you give me a chance to prove I can handle the steers, Mr. Favor? How many times have you asked that, Mushy? This time it means a lot, Mr. Favor. Your mother? Yes, sir. You want to work full time at driving cattle, huh? You won't regret it, Mr. Favor. I think. You really sure? Yes, sir. Now, I'll see if Wishbone can do without you for a little while. Wishbone? Yeah. You think you could? Do without Mushy for a while? Mr. Favor, do you think I could do without a wart on the end of my nose? Why? Well, he wants to try his hand at driving cattle. Well, get himself killed. If that's what he wants, I can work him to death. Then you'd have to do without him anyway, wouldn't you? All right, go on and get yourself killed. I can get more done without you. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. But somebody's got to help me with them dishes. The men will all take turns. All right. Hey, Mushy, is Mommy's boy planning on riding out to see his mommy? Scarlet? Yeah, boss. Mushy's gonna try his hand at drove. 
And you're the one that's going to stay with him till he gets the hang of it and see that he doesn't get hurt. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm dying to see if what hatched Mushy is really human. You think maybe Mushy's ma has two heads, I wish? <laughs> Probably has. Must have scared old Mushy Plum Sapodillo when he was a baby. I can see her now, come riding into camp, shooting old Mushy out with a shotgun. Yeah, you mean an apron <laughs> string, don't you? I bet she weighs 200 pounds and as old as Methuselah. Should be in Clarington tonight. Oh, I can hardly wait to see my boy. It's been a long time. I wonder if he'll recognize me. Now, nah, Grandma, you know, you've always looked 75 years old. I hope he got my letter, or he wouldn't know I'm coming. Such a wonderful boy. I wish he hadn't left home. We used to have such wonderful times together. Playing tiddlywinks? You've been awfully quiet, Mrs. Musgrove. Have I? Nah, that's just because you ain't given nobody else a chance to talk, Grandma. The lady's name is Mrs. Laker, young man. And I suggest you show her the proper respect. Or else. Or else what? I personally shall slap your face. You? <laughs> Would you like another or else? I was only joking. Miss Laker, she knows I was only joking, don't you, ma'am? I bet your son would beat the daylights out of him, too, wouldn't he? I doubt it. Better not try it. If he'd slap my face, he'd be a dead man. Just be another notch on my gun. All it takes to make a notch on a gun is a sharp knife. 18 men and 18 boot heels that can testify to my notches. We'll ask them. Precious ladies. Get up. Come on, get up. Give me yours. Hey, that looks like gold. my son's picture. I forbid you to touch it. Why, you... You take your hands off me. Oh, 
right tandem, keeping an eye on each other. Taking on your overflow stuck us with a heavy load. We couldn't go any faster. Thought for a minute Mrs. Mushgrove had him stalled. Handled herself mighty brave. Did everything but bite one of them. Might not have been too smart. How far are you going, Mrs. Mushgrove? Well, I'm trying to catch up with my son, who's on a cattle drive somewhere around here. Your son on a cattle drive? Yes, I missed him at Owen Mills, but I thought maybe if I got to Clarington, I could look for him from there. On the hill back there, I saw a lot of dust up ahead. Could have been your son's cattle drive. Good. Then I can get to him from here. Now, there must be a ranch house or a farm somewhere near here. Would you please take me there so that I can rent a buggy? Oh, well, well I have them around, and the stage company has their rules. And what's its rule about protecting passengers in holdups? The, the sheriff will need you to help identify the men. You mean the sheriff won't take your word for it if he ever catches them? Now, do you take me? Or do I walk? All right. We'll take you. Good for you. Go ahead. I'll follow. Stopping here for? We gotta find that woman. Before? If she identifies you, the law is gonna find us. You gonna kill her? Unless you want to marry her. Me a fool. Maybe we just ought to kill you. That way we won't have to worry about you being recognized. Try crown. We're going to Clarendon and pick up that woman. You're getting it, Mushy. Thanks to you, Mr. Scarlett. How's it going, Mushy? It's just fine, Mr. Favor. Good. We'll make night camp here. You better come on in. I'd like to stay a while longer. The more practice I get for my mock, huh? The better I look in front of her. Boss, I think he's ready to try it along. Well, let's find out. Don't forget what I learned you. I'll help you out and get your head. <laughs> well, what happened after that? Well, then he got up in the saddle and looked around, just like he's a trail boss. Hollers, head him up, move him out. <laughs> just who is in charge here? 
Your favor, ma'am. Mr. Favor, do you really think it wise to send a boy to do a man's work? Apparently not. You realize my son might have been killed? You mean you're his mother, ma'am? Yes, sir, I am. Were you really so short-handed? Please, Mr. Favor, tell her how mean no steers can be. Yeah, uh, could have happened to any of us, ma'am. Wishbone? What's the matter with my coke's locks? He was unsaddled trying to turn a steer. I succeeded in stopping his horse. Your cook's what? Oh, just a trail term, ma'am. Grants, get me some blankets and hot water. Come on out of there. Now, what's the matter with you? I'm dizzy. As if I didn't know. Come on, get it in here. Now, lie down here and let me take a look. Well, you're just going to have to wait supper. This is going to take quite a lot of doctoring. Is it serious? Well, no, on second look, it's most of the doctrine is just going to be scrubbing. Uh, brain scrubbing, that is. Well, I'll be very happy to start the dinner. Lady, you know what you're getting into? I think so. And I'm sure all of these men are as hungry as my boy is. All right, we're having stew. Makings are over there at the chuck wagon. Well, I'll get right to it. Am I going to be all right, Mr. Wishbone? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I don't even know if I can stretch out this treatment until you all finish the supper. <laughs> How do you feel now? Oh, fine. It, it was my head. Nothing to worry about. Good. Then we can travel tomorrow. But, Ma, I meant it. I don't want to go home. Well, we won't have any arguments about it. You're just not ready for a life like this. It sure was good stew, Miss Musgrove. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nolan. I call it ragu. Ragu? Uh, no wonder it's so good with a fancy name like that. <laughs> what about it, Washbone? It is delicious, Miss Mushgrove. Oh, well, there's nothing to fixing one meal, goodness. But I could never cook for all these men every day the way you do. Uh, Miss Mushgrove, I've been meaning to ask you about your son Harkness. Now, it ain't any of my business, but he kind of takes to this life, and I think it'd be better if you'd leave Mushy with us. Mushy? Oh, uh, that's kind of a trail term, ma'am. Uh, but it is part of his name. Kind of squeezed down a bit. Well... As a widow, I have to decide things for myself. And I think I know what's best for my boy. Maybe if he wants to, he can try this again when he's grown up. Well, now, I've been meaning to tell you about that, too. Now, Mushy takes an awful lot of ribbon around here without any complaining. Now, that's a sign of being grown up. Yeah, Ma, I'm signed up to finish the whole drive. If I hadn't come along this afternoon, you'd be dead, signed up or no signed up. Well, you're going home. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wishbone, for trying. Mr. Quince, can I have one of your cigars? Huh? Oh, sure, Mushy. Here, here, let me light it. like a good cigar after dinner. Harkness, when did you take up smoking? Well, drawers are great ones for playing jokes on each other. Probably sneak some loco weed in there. Which one of you? It's me. Why, you... It's lucky for you my ma's around. I don't want to bloody your nose in front of her. Nothing wrong with this. It's real Virginia tobacco. It's much too strong for you. 
Pack up your things, Harkness. We're leaving. In the dead of night? That's right, Mrs. Musgrove. There's certainly no time to be starting out on a journey. We could make you real comfortable in supply wagon, ma'am. Well, that's very neighborly of both of you. Very well. We can start at dawn. And I'll go first to the farm where I rented the buggy, and then the stagecoach stop can't be far from there. Uh, well, then I'll get your blanket. Yeah, very kind. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm afraid we're going to be needing a new cook's louse. But there ain't any of you wants a job, right? Like Wishbone says, you're mighty well told we don't. You see, Mr. Faber? Ain't everybody can put up with Mr. Wishbone. You're mighty well told. Uh, please don't let her take me. What can I do? I don't know. Please don't let her take me. Well, I ain't never been happier I've been on this trail drive. Well, the more I'm cussed at and the more I'm laughed at, the more I feel like I belong. I wish there was something we could do. Maybe there is. Maybe if something could happen to her, I could save her. What do you want us to do? Fight your mom, Mushy? Oh, no. I don't want any of you to get hurt. Uh, but if somebody she didn't know could take her away, I could save her. And she'd be so thankful, she'd let me do anything I want. What do you mean? Uh, take her away against her will? It might work. Yeah, I'm afraid I couldn't go along with anything that might be jeopardizing Mrs. Mushgrove. Don't worry about that, Mr. Fair. You should have seen the way she saved me this afternoon. No, oh, don't remind me about that. Mushy, I think you ought to be with your mother. You ain't got to stop thinking about it. Hey, I think I got an idea. Suppose we hired a couple of fellows and have one of them play like he's a sheriff. Then take her in for questioning. Questioning for what? We say this fellow where she got the buggy, that he's accused of renting stolen property, and she's got to go in and identify him. Or maybe they'd think that she was working with him, see? Yeah, and, then, and they wouldn't have to scare her any and, until Mushy got there. Then they'd pull off their badges and say they're holding her for ransom. Maybe for uh, Mr. Favor's trail money. Yeah. And that, that's, that'll be when Mushy comes in, huh? Right. How about that? Look, we ride old Mushy all the time, and he's willing to do anything he can for us. We ought to help him. I think it'll work. And you make sure that Mrs. Musgrove don't get hurt. Go ahead. Well, don't expect her to change her mind after coming 600 miles to get him. Well, she might. I'll go back there where we wanted to be, and hire a couple of men. Just make sure that they don't come in when everybody's sleeping. Oh, well, I'll have them come in about daybreak when Wishbone's cooking coffee. I'm sorry that you don't seem very glad to see me. Especially since I traveled over half the country to try and find you. Um, what? You don't, you don't see Mr. Favor's mother tracking halfway across the country to hold his hand? Saying, come on home, Sonny. Well, now, Harkness, Mr. Favor's a grown man. No, the time will come when you will thank me for this. Really, you will. You'll realize it is for your own good. Good night, son. You go to bed, too, now. It's been quite a day for both of us, hasn't it? Good night. Sheriff will want to talk to all you folks. 
Thanks, Mr. Laker. I'll get the sheriff right away. Give them five dollars a piece. They're coming to take your mother away. They'll be here in about an hour. What do I do? Well, you're gonna take her to that old, uh, old mining shaft up in the hills there, a couple of miles. Now, there's a bunch of old mines up there, but you can't miss this. It's marked the Zettner Mining Company. I made the sketch so you won't miss it. Zettner. Did you get big fellas sort of look thing? They're big enough. You gotta be convincing. Oh, I'll be convincing, Mister. After they leave, you give them about 15 minutes, and then you follow them. They're going to tell her that they're not lawmen just before you get there. What'd I say? Well, it don't matter what you say, just be strong. Just bust in there and say, let go of my mom. I told the smallest fella to jump you and give you a fight. You'll struggle for a while, and he'll let you win. Well, what about the other one? Well, he's just going to stand by and keep an eye on your mother so she doesn't run away. Why well, not fight him, too? Well, let's don't overdo it. After you knock the first one out, you pick up your gun and aim it at the other fellow, and he'll like surprise and drop his gun. Gosh, Mr. Nolan, I sure appreciate this. Oh, it's all right, Mushy. You just get some rest and be ready to mix it with him in the morning, huh? Kid, you ain't at the herd yet. Well, we can find 3,000 head of cattle by ourselves. Get down. That's what you brought me along for. No, we brought you along to get you out of Clarington. Mister, you got me wrong. I'm on your side. I'd like to throw in with a bunch like you. You would. Please, mister, you got me wrong. I'd like to be one of you guys. I ain't never gonna tell. That's right. I done everything you asked me to do. What can a man do for you and live? Not be in the wrong place at the wrong time, kid. That kid was right. There she is. There's only one old man with her. We could take her easy. There's one old man and some 20 drovers. Yeah. Won't do us any good to rush them, huh? There are 20 drovers now. They're gonna get up in a little while. They're gonna eat their breakfast, and they're going out to take their spots around the herd. Then it'll just be her and the cook, and we, uh... Yeah, that's right. Now, how did you figure that out? What you don't understand is that Harkness is... Well, he's different. Oh, he's a good boy. I don't mean that. But he is slower than most. I know many who were full-grown at 17 or 18. But with Harkness, it'll take him till he's 30, likely. <laughs> Would this be Martha Mushgrove? Why? Well, we have to take her to identify a man accused of renting out stolen goods. You, Mrs. Mushgrove? I am. You uh, rented a buggy recently, didn't you? I did. Well, I was stolen. Come with us, Mrs. Mushgrove. Here, now, Sheriff. Well, I know you got a job to do, but let's be a little more friendly about it. Mrs. Mushgrove isn't any criminal. Thank you very much, Mr. Wishbone. I feel certain you won't let them take me. Oh, well, there isn't very much I can do about it, ma'am. He's the law. 
Come on, Ms. Mushroom. This ain't gonna take long. Let's go. Now, you treat her gentle and bring her right back soon. I wish I think it worked. Yeah, that was good play acting. I don't know. I'm still not liking this. Well, ain't nothing gonna happen to her. It's all set, ain't it? To go rescue my mother? Now, wait a minute, Mushy. You gotta wait till I get your mob to mine. No, Roddy, I think by the time he gets a horse saddle, uh, it'll be time for him to go. Good, thank you, Mr. Nolan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. for one woman this time? Shut up. Let's go. All right for me to go now? You won't be needing your apron, Mushy. Oh. Well, first mine on the south, up in the hills. That's right. Now you remember everything I told you. Yep. First mine on the south. Uh, Set your mining company. That's right. Good luck, Marcy. Go get him. Here I go.
Sheriff from Clarington, looking for Martha Mushgrove. What for? I wanted to look at some wanted posters. Didn't she tell you she was on a stage that got held up? No. She saw the face of one of the men who did it. Where is she? Well, huh. she'll be back in a little while. Now you may as well have some coffee while you wait. in here. Get the horses inside. Can you get off that by yourself? My dear sir, I rode horses before I was old enough to ride. against one unarmed woman? You planning to send for reinforcements? Who were those men? Men who sooner or later will catch up with you. Lawmen. They both wore badges, that's true. What they want? That's none of your business. Or maybe it is. Taking quite a time for Mrs. Musgrove to show up, ain't it? I hope she's safe. What do you mean, safe? Well, it could be. I ain't the only one looking for her. They might want to grab her first and silence her. Who's they? Aren't, aren't those the men you hired to help Mushy? Yeah, it is. Where is she? What does it look like? Here, help you with Sam. A gun butt cracked him under the skull so hard he can hardly see. All we were supposed to do was put up a token fight against one boy. Nobody said putting up a fight against three men. What three men? The three that jumped us right after we left here. What did they look like? Wore masks. From my head cleared, they was gone and she was gone. Looks like the men you were after, Sheriff, already got to Mrs. Musgrove. Rowdy, take over. <laughs> She was supposed to go. No sign of his horse around. Could have been driven off.
Oh, she's been in there, all right. There's no mistaking about his footprints. All right, we're spread out and comb these hills. Quince, you try that one. <laughs> to bury me alive? If you had a trace of mercy in you, you'd shoot me first and let me die like a man. Well, I'd never shoot a woman. That's noble of you. Extremely noble. Let go of my mom. Put on your guns. Don't try that. Agnes, I'm just fine. Look out! I'm getting tired. Ain't you freaking nice supposed to win? I don't know who you think I am, but I ain't. That's it, boy. Gee, you know, I wish somebody would tell me who, what, and why. They held up the stagecoach. And they're after me because I saw his face. They aren't. You aren't. Mr. Nolan, he didn't promise you five dollars? He held up the stagecoach? Drag him in the back.
Harry, his mother, and himself. Get my money. We ain't got nothing to lose. All right, kid. I'm coming out with you, mother. Good for you, Harkness. Give them a taste of their own medicine. I can't. I can't hold it much longer. Throw down your guns. Hold on, kid. Don't let go. Pick up the guns, Ma. Show them gentlemen out fast. You heard what my son said. Now you move. Oh. Gentlemen, I... This is Musgrove. Uh, sure, Mushy proved himself to be a pretty good man. Well, even the sheriff said so when he took those men back to jail. He said it'd take quite a man to handle those three. That's right, Mrs. Musgrove. All the men are awfully proud of the way your son's handled himself. Look, you gotta let him stay, Mrs. Musgrove. I, I couldn't take this job more than one day. No offense, Mushy. You wouldn't want him to break his word. Now, he signed on in San Antonio to finish the drive in Sedalia. Well, you're all quite right. It's been a lovely visit, Harkness. You mean I can stay? I've been trying to tell you that all morning, but honestly, you men talk more than women do. When are you leaving, Ma? In just a few minutes. The sheriff told me that I could get the stagecoach right in front of the farm where I rented the buggy. Harkness. You've all been so kind to me, really. I enjoyed myself very much. Oh, really? It was our pleasure, ma'am. And when you come home, you bring Mr. Wishbone for a visit. Oh, I'd be charmed, ma'am. Of course, you're all invited, you know, any time at all, really. I'd love to. Thank you. We'll do that, thanks. Well, I'll just uh, go get my bonnet and my parasol. We'll help you. Well, it looks like I'm stuck with you. Take that just fine, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> How about you, Wish? How about me what? Well, going in, you're always talking about how you need a bath. 
What day is this? It's Friday. Well, who ever heard of anybody taking a bath on Friday? I think I'll just wait until the day the good Lord intended me to. <laughs> you find me any worms? How long do you think we'll be here, Mr. Roddy? Uh, I don't know much. We're a good week ahead of schedule. Got plenty of grass here. We might as well fatten them up a bit. You know, it don't seem normal, Rowdy. They have good grass, good weather, no hurry, nothing wrong. I don't know. Well, we're short a man, Quince. Maybe you can find me a man out here in the middle of nowhere. Good morning. That's been that way since sunup. Saw so you heard about a quarter mile back. Figured there must be fresh water around. I ran out a day or two ago. Go ahead, help yourself. Trail boss? The ramrod, Roddy Yates. Hey, don't we know each other from somewhere? Could be. John Shepard. Colonel, don't you remember me? I was with you in the summer of 61. I, I was Private Yates then. You're my prison in Arizona. Shepard? Rock of Chancellorville? I was a Chancellorville. What was a Southerner doing way out in Yuma? I was visiting friends in the Arizona Territory. When the fighting started, they had Yates and me in irons. That's the first we knew there was a war on. Yeah, that happened to a lot of us then. Well, how'd you get out of Yuma, Mr. Shepard? He took a broomstick and carved a gun, bluffed his way past half the garrison. Matter of luck, I'm afraid. Whatever it was, it's a pleasure to know you, Colonel. Jim Quince. Quince. Say, uh, Colonel, the way you used to talk about Virginia all the time, I'm surprised to see you this far west. A man's got to make a living. The way I feel about the North, I'm not about to start making it up there. Heard you say you could use another handwriting herd. We can use you. Hey, Gerard! I ain't enough coffee but for one cup, Quince. I got here first to shove off. Well, gone one thing about you, you're a dependable cuss. I ain't never heard you say a polite word to yet. Well, don't listen for one. Well, get out of that shell and come on meet a great man. Might do you some good. What man? Colonel John Shepard. He was a commander that held Chancellorville. I know him better than you do. Well, come on, then. I wouldn't spit on his shoes. I beat my way across Arkansas. Got down to New Orleans. From there, I caught a boat to Atlanta. Joined up there with General Lee. How come he didn't bust out, Mr. Rowdy? Short as broomsticks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just couldn't give up that fine prison food. <laughs> it's in your favor. Oh, well, this is your boss. Bienvenido, señores. Hey, qué pasa? Tal vez está bien, señor. And you? No, don't ask. We ran into some bad news. Screaming for beef up north. There's supposed to be three big herds pushing up behind us. No more laying around lakes. Take everything we got to stay ahead. And I have some good news, senor. We found a new drover. Out here? It was the purest accident, just luck. There he is with senor Rowdy. His name is Shepard. His name is what? John Shepard. You know him? Yeah, but not as John Shepard. Well, I had a new man. So I heard. This is uh, Colonel John Shepard, Mr. Paver. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, this here's Clay Forrester, Colonel. Hello, Rankin. Rankin? Yeah, that's the name he used uh, up in the Dakotas. You know him? Uh, by reputation and smell. He's a bounty hunter. 
Howdy, what, what are you talking about? I've known him for a long time. His name's John Shepard. Am I wrong, mister? Right as rain. I was in Deadwood the night you shot the Pecos kid in the back. How much did you make on the kid? The same amount you'd have made if you'd had the guts to take him. Pardon me while I go get sick. And for once, wish it isn't because of your cooking. Bounty hunter. What's the matter, Yates? You feel like getting sick, too? Well, I just don't understand why. Because I don't want to tire my back picking rags. Is that reason acceptable to you? If I was a rag picker, I'd take that as an insult. Would you now? Somebody ought to slap a brand on his face so everybody'd recognize him. Who wants to start heating the iron, you? You? Or how about you? With your large, fat mouth. What about the rest of you? Any of you want to help cleanse me of my sins? You're all so righteous looking, we ought to start a new religion. Call it the gospel, according to St. Drover. <laughs> you find something amusing, Trail Boss? Well, uh, let's say I recognize the group portrait. You got a comment to make on my occupation? Not unless you got one to make on mine. Franken, or Shepherd, or whatever you're calling yourself these days. You're just bound to start a conversation with that big fat mouth of yours, aren't you? Franken, I don't like your kind. I never have. What kind am I? You're a murderer. I wouldn't talk about murderers if I were you, Forrester. I never killed a man because I got panicky, because I was careless, or because I got drunk. Man had a price on his head. I brought him in the same as any of the rest of you would have done if you weren't shaking too bad to pull the trigger. Just for the record, the last man I hunted down was the Pecos kid. That was six months ago. I'm through with all of that. Since then, I've been looking for work. That's why I'm here. To work at punching cattle. We move out at Senna. You'll ride drag. He's a bounty hunter. He's worse than that. It's an animal. Without any feelings, without any inside. You're on. There's a couple of herds on our trail. I want you to backtrack, find out how many and how close. Now? Now. Looks like we're going to be working together again after all, Yates. Yeah. Just how in the world do you figure a man like that anyway? Rock of Chancellorsville. What happened? What happened to make him give up bounty, huh? Well, who said he quit except him? He hasn't quit. That brings up a mighty interesting question. Who's he after? What's the matter? They're strung out like a clothesline. Still seem to want to move. Look on drag side, Shepard. Clint, Scarlett, and Jenkins? Everybody. What 
in the Sam Hill are they doing back there? I imagine they're afraid of getting their backs to me. Oh, fuck. You can hold down the section all by yourself. Yeah, any objections? Oh, no, you're doing fine. You didn't hear me when I said we're going to pick up this snail space? Well, we've been doing a little talking, Mr. Perry. You've been doing a little... That explains it. I wondered what you've been doing. You sure ain't been working. Mr. Favor, we want you to get rid of Shepard. Want what? We want you to get rid of him. Oh, I heard, I heard. We don't have to work with murderers. Well, too squeamish to shake his hand when he first came into camp. Yeah, well, I never closed my eyes all night on account of him. Oh, all right, all right. Now, suppose he is still collecting bounty. You got a price on your head, Jim? No. Scarlet? Nope. Well, just the same, you ought to get rid of him. What for? He's the only man in the whole drive who's pulling his weight. Anything more to say? I guess not. Shepard's still hunting? Well, I ain't seen him shoot nobody yet. He didn't have much of a chance to. Jump one of our men, he'd have the whole crew on him. Well, I asked you the same question I asked them. Figure you got a bounty on your head? Who knows? Everybody's got something in their past they're a little ashamed of. Well, then who are you to judge him? Nobody. I don't give a plug nickel what a man's done before I hire him. As long as he does his job, it's good enough for me. Shepard does a good job. Well, I agree, but you're still gonna have trouble with the men. And we'll give him trouble right back. Deluxe service? Can't let a man starve, any man. Set it down and get out. Take it back. There are some I'd let starve. Cottonmouth bite that fellow. The poor snake had blowed up and die. Well, you said the same thing about Gerard yesterday, Wishbone. Come to think about it, though, they are two of a kind. Anybody know anything about Senor Gerard? Where he worked? Where he came from? No. 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 I sure don't. You know, talking about Gerard, a kind of funny thing happened yesterday. I was down the lake and Gerard come by. He didn't see me, but he looked all around and he threw something in the water. Probably a couple of wishbones biscuits. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Why don't you go on the stage? Well? Well, it didn't sink right away. So you fished it out. No, it was floating right there in front of me. Well, come on, what was it? It was an undershirt. A what? Yeah, an undershirt with the name Graceman printed across the back of it. Graceman? What's Graceman? It's a prison just outside Deadwood. Well, that's why Gerard almost jumped out of his skin when he saw Shepard yesterday. Sure. He knows him all right. He knows the name of Rankin up in the Dakotas. Figure he escaped? Maybe he's the one Shepard's after. Now, if he is, why didn't Shepard follow him south? Maybe he's waiting for a better time. One thing's sure, nobody could be as mean as Gerard without his hiding something. Something in his past, Mr. Wishbone? Yes, yeah, something in his past. Like the time when you poisoned all them people. What's this? What are you talking about? Well, that, uh, that time in Missouri when you poisoned that whole farm full of men. I never did. Now, where'd you hear that? Well, you told me in your sleep last night. And you listened? Well, you kept shaking me awake. You'd tell me all over again, Mr. Wishbone. 
Wait a minute, Wishbone. Poisoned the whole farm? Well, nobody died. At least I don't think so. I was younger than Mushy and it was my first cooking job. Well, I thought I'd give everybody a treat, so I went out and picked a whole bucket full of mushrooms. At least I thought they was mushrooms. Anyway, I took off and never went back. Well, if uh, somebody did die, there could be an old poster out on you. All right, let's face it. There could be a poster out on any one of us. There's no poster on me. Oh, come off it, Clay. You could have got liquored up and wiped out a whole town. Well, I have, even, even if you ain't. A pack of us tore up a saloon down on the Rio Grande and left two dead. At least that's what they say. You mean you don't know? Nope. It's too full of red eye. Well, maybe confession's what we need. Anybody else? Gentlemen. Working Kittredge. Then you're better off too, I think. Well, maybe that's who he was drawing on. Did you see him telling him? I told you I was through with that business. Uh-huh. We heard. Cowboy, if I had a conscience as black as yours, I'd put a bullet in my brain. There's nothing wrong with my conscience, mister. Nothing? That was a fair fight. What was? I told you that big fat mouth of yours would get you in trouble. What fight? A wrangler up in Montana. Tried to take a girl away from me, I killed him. There were some posters out of me for a couple of months, till I cleared myself. And you can't pull them all back. Well, if you're all cleared... He's not gonna take the time to check on that. I don't intend to stand around until he puts a bullet in my back. Strap on that gun, mister. You wanna draw on me? Put it on! Strap cowboy. Shepard! Bad policy yelling like that, trail boss. You almost lost yourself a scout. What's it all about? Well, Mr. Clay told Mr. Shepard to strap on his gun. Oh, no. You really that tired of living? It's a private fight. We got no time for fights, private or public. All right, let's break it up. Go on. Well, there's still some coffee. Anybody want any? And now it starts, huh? I tell you, I never even seen his hand move. That gun just seemed to jump out off by itself. You're lucky Mr. Faber stopped it, Clay. 
It's not stopped. It's just delayed. What makes you so sure it's you he's after? Oh, no, it's me, all right. Well, hold on there. Wishbone may have a point there. In fact, uh, he could have seen an old poster on me, too. I was uh, in the Oklahoma Territory playing poker, and this fellow dropped the fifth ace. Beat him up pretty bad. He could have died. I, I don't know. Well, I helped you. Remember that? That's right. My scene, I think, was the worst of all. Yours? See, I was working on a rancho in Texas. There was a horse the patron said nobody was to ride. Too wild. But I took him out one morning when I thought I was alone. The patron had a little girl, six years old. She ran up, and the horse... I... I said the horse had gotten out by himself. But maybe the patron knew I was lying. Jenkins? Yeah, it happened back in Dodge about six or seven years ago. I was drunk, sleeping it off in a flop house. I felt somebody trying to steal my boots, so I hit him with a bottle. Well, did you? Did he kill him? I don't know. I didn't stick around to find out. But you see, that's what I mean. Isn't any one of us in the clear? Maybe not. But it's me he's been baiting. It's me he wants. Three hands down, and the worst part of the drive still ahead. Well, I'll get after him. What for? Well, we can't spare him. What are you going to do? Chain him to the herd? Mr. Faber. Hmm? Well, wasn't Burke going to stand the night watch? Yeah, him and Kittredge. Who's going to take his place? Uh, me and one of the other ones that left, Fedorov. If you don't mind, all the same to you, I'd like to take Fedorov's place. I don't need to go martyred on me, Shepard. They'd have quit whether you'd come along or not. You know better than that? Do as you please. Unless you're afraid to be alone with me, Ramrod. I get my gear. Almost too quiet. Well, they're tired. The only thing about pushing them hard, they sleep good. There's the opposite of men. Remember once at Chancellorville? May. Night about like this. The army half dead on its feet. And nobody was sleeping. Well, they had war to think about. That's one thing about these cattle. Ain't got much to fret them. Alive? I don't know, Shepard. You're turning into a big disappointment to my men. You're bound to determine you're a big-time killer, and you ain't doing nothing to prove it. Maybe I ought to start running around with a knife between my teeth. Hey, now, that might help. Seriously, how big a blow is it to the drive, losing three men like that? I will survive it. Maybe I ought to cut out before you lose more. There's a town just north of here. You could ride in with me and pick up your replacements. Hey, now, you trying to get me alone? You're too quick, Mr. Faber. Besides, I thought you needed the job. Was, Yeah? Well, uh, the men, uh... And what about him? You giving you trouble? Yeah. See what I mean? It's best I quit. I didn't say nothing about quitting. First thing you two know, you'll be sitting out here all alone with nobody to talk to but me and 3,000 cows. Why don't you be sensible? Look, Shepard, nobody tells me how to run my drive. Not you, not them. I'll see you in the morning. man. Good stubborn streak. Yeah, well, you got to have a stubborn streak to run this outfit. <laughs> Sometimes a stubborn streak keeps you going. It's good for a man when he runs out of pious expressions like patriotism, goodness, piety. Maybe it's none of my business, Colonel. Then why don't you keep your mouth shut? Yeah, you're probably right. Gates. Sometimes I talk a little sharper than I intend to. I guess that's new to you since Yuma. Yeah. Maybe that's what comes of losing a war. 
I'm still curious about one thing. Yates. What happened, Colonel, huh? What happened where? I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. Haven't you? I told you I don't pick rags. There's dirtier ways of making a living. Living, that's a key word, Yates, living. I was born owning 1,200 of the finest acres in Virginia, fields, barns. I lost all that with the war. That's what happened. I lost it. But I'll get it back. I don't care what the price. They took your land? They took everything. They burned every stick, every leaf of tobacco. They killed my wife. Oh. You want to know what the real nightmare is, Yates? You know who killed Ali? The Southerners, the deserters. I buried her up in the hill where the house used to be. But now I can't even put flowers on her grave till I buy the land back. I see. Well, don't you strain your eyes about it like you said yourself. It's none of your business. No, it isn't, Colonel. Man's a complex animal, Yates. Yeah, you're right. Animal enough to murder for a living and complex enough to quit when he knows it's wrong. Well, Mr. Faber was right. We'll stick with you if we have to drive these moss horns to Kansas by ourselves. Murderers like to do a little cattle rustling on the side every now and then. Well, fine. Let's take them back in. Soup's on. Yates with you? Nope. All alone, Mr. Favor? All alone. Now's your big chance. mostly rumor. There's one about 20 miles back, but it ain't fast and it ain't big. That should teach us a lesson, Mr. Faber, not to anticipate trouble. Hey, you go on back and eat, your ride. We can take these strays in. You think you'd be safe with me? If he don't turn his back. Come on. Get 
get back to camp. Now what? Clay's trying to take over the herd. On account of me? Yep. I couldn't join them, senor boss. No matter how I feel against this man. Wishbone's putting up an argument, but that ain't doing too much good. All right, let's go. What about the strays? Stephen! <laughs> Sign up in yet? No, but it won't be long. Well, Wish, have you made up your mind? Yep. For or against? Against? Wish, what's come over you? You were the one that was yelling the loudest about Shepard. About Shepard, but not against Mr. Favor. Look, Wishbone, all we want him to do is send Shepard away. That's all. All? Oh, that's an awful lot. That's like saying, all right, Mr. Favor, you be the boss and we'll tell you what to do. It's Shepard or it's me or any one of us. And I'm not running away now and out at my time of life. All right, you just start pushing Gil Favor too far, and you might find out you can't run. Now, if he wants to start a fight, we'll have to finish it. Well, let's not be too sure. He isn't just exactly alone, you know. He's got Rowdy and Shepard and Jesus and me. That's five. Six, Mr. Wishbone. Six. Six against eleven. Ten. Batten isn't on anybody's side. I'll be the audience. I'll sit back and applaud. I want to tell you one thing, Gerard. If I thought for one minute you're the one we're protecting, I'd throw you to shepherds of bastard curl your hair. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Quince. I'm as clean as a newborn babe. New from where? Graceman prison? Clay, suppose he is the one. Supposing Gerard busted out of Graceman. I was parole. Be some joke, wouldn't it? Us getting in a gunfight to save Gerard's skin. He don't want me. If he does, it's a, it's a mistake. Yeah. Well, it might be. Isn't that half of what we've been afraid of? Did that bounty hunter kill his man before he could get him into court? What if there is some mistake? Now we can make him promise to take Gerard in alive. Ain't nobody taking me nowhere. Shepard, did you ride your man? I said nobody ain't taking me nowhere. Now, hold on now, Gerard. Look, hold it, will you? Put the gun down. Let me see. How's it going? I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, I couldn't need a knife. There you go. Washi, grab some of those shirts in the back of the wagon. I'll take care of it. You two get out there, check them, and try and keep them bunched. Wishbone, you handle a knife better than most army surgeons, I remember. How yeah, comes from carving for too many empty bellied drovers? How does it look? Well, he's gonna live, but he's gonna be much good for a while. By the way, Shepard, was Gerard your man? Nope. He knew you. He sure that was the reason he was a guest at Graceman for a few years. He was my eighth bounty. Pretty good price, too. Mr. Favor, Mr. Hastu says we need help. That shot got the cattle awful jumpy. All right. Wish you come on with us. Shepard, you stay with Roddy.
To me, Shepard, I... I believed you. Last lesson in life, Yates. Don't believe in anything. Dodge is a lie. Not according to a sheriff up in Cornelius County. Yeah, well, that sheriff must be crazy. He must be twice as crazy thinking you can take Mr. Favor in. I need that 2,000 awful bad. I'm brave, you ain't. Out. Probably the best thing. Sometimes the pain from a wound like that drive a man clear out of his mind. Yeah. Good to see you, Ben. We're going to see about you, Mr. Faber. Oh, well, 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 well. Is this what Roddy was trying to tell me about? That's right. What's the matter? There ain't a word of truth in this. Never heard a wanted man say anything different. Not true. Cornelius County, where's that? East of here, away is. Man came from there. His brother's sheriff. His brother's putting the reward up out of his own pocket. Standard. Standard. Drove her in one of your crews. Last season? Could be. Standard. Oh, Tom Standard? Sounds like the name he gave you. Hmm. Ah. Let's drop. to save him. I was crossing White River. Gurn knocked Tom off his horse. By the time I got to him, he was drowned. Don't believe it? What does it matter? Well, if I'm telling the truth, it's wrong, ain't it? I'm paid to bring a man in, not to judge his crime. No, a man that uh, ain't got the sense to judge right from wrong, weigh the facts in the case. He ain't much of a man. Right or wrong's a matter of opinion. You know how much you mean to me? Paper said 2,000. More than that. It's my last entry in the bank book. After this, I go to a courthouse outside of Richmond, and I buy back my land. Stop the killing? And maybe. Though I might buy some foxes. So you figure to go from killer to gentleman just by changing the address? I never was a murderer. It's a matter of opinion again. Not a matter of opinion, it's a fact. I shot the baker's kid like you'd shoot a mad dog. But the last three men I brought in, I brought in live. 
Maybe you're not up to killing anymore, even when you got to. I wouldn't count on that favor if I were you. Well, you had me alone in the gully, why didn't you shoot then? A lot easier taking me in slung across the saddle than sitting in. Gerard came along. And you couldn't shoot him, either? It's strange. Seems like you're getting sick of the killing, and yet you sow it like grain wherever you go. Sow it? Clay and the others most likely gonna kill Gerard. It's not my business. Yes, it is yours. You start them off. Now, they want to give you Gerard like a present so you get off the backs. You turn them into bounty hunters. How do you like that? They're grown men. They know what they're doing. No, they can. They're prejudging just like you. Now, there's a difference. They're outside the law. I'm in it. They're after a man because he's cold and mean. He's different. They don't like that. But there's no justice to their chase. Oh, if there isn't yours. You know, I could shoot you now and say you tried to resist arrest. But if you want to give me your word, you won't try to escape. Nope. Ava, why don't you think this thing through? Use some common sense. Go back up, talk to that sheriff, tell him how the man was killed. If you go to the trouble of rounding up witnesses, or would there just be a lynch in some dark night? You might hire me to round up some witnesses. You ain't got the time. You're going back to plantation. Right now, I ain't either. I got a herd to sell. As soon as I get it sold, I'll take my witnesses and go back and see Standard on my own. Time's passing, Favor. I ain't got it to waste. I suppose not. Get on your horse. Oh. Look, Trail Boss, whatever friendship there was between us, don't count on it anymore. I ain't counting on friendship, just common sense. Move. Do what? A lynching? Oh, I might as well stay here and take my chances. Time's up, Shepard. Here comes your present, huh? wrapped and ready. What the devil's... That's close enough for us to... What's going on? Now, what does it look like? Treat the wrong possum. You mean it's you he wants, Mr. Favor? Seems like. But you ain't done nothing. Well, that makes Gerard and me even, don't it, Jim? Gerard's clean. He's already paid for what he did. What about you, Jim? Untie him. Get on, Gerard. Look, I'm real sorry. I didn't Forget it. I guess I had it coming to me. Maybe I didn't. It's done. Yeah. You know what this is costing me, Favor? Not as much as it could have behind you. Anytime you want to get in a poker game, I'll back you to the limit. What are you on doing? Oh, I don't know. Maybe go down to Mexico. Like you say, a man can't go back. Not to bounty hunting, not to broomstick guns, and not to Virginia. Forward ain't such a bad direction. Why don't you save that sermon for your crew? Might help straighten out their halos. <laughs> 